Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. Today, we are going to be showcasing a speedrun of Dredge. Any, or sorry, 100%. Before we get into that, though, just a few quick reminders. GDQX will be live from TwitchCon October 20th to 22nd. If you're interested in running live at the event, use exclamation GDQX in Twitch chat, or you can go to GDQX.com or GDQX.GamesDoneQuick.com to submit before August 28th. Anyone accepted as a runner or backup will receive a TwitchCon badge and the opportunity to showcase their run on the GDQ stage. Also, Games Done Quick will be at PAX West 2023, which is September 1st through 4th. If you're interested in watching live runs, or if you're interested in trying your hand at the Speedrun Gauntlet, be sure to head over to the Speedrun stage at PAX West to find out more. Uh, with all that said, I'll hand it over to the runner, let him introduce himself. Sure. Uh, my name is Captain Carrot, and I am the world record holder in the 100% uh, category and any fish or all fish category for Dredge. Uh, and I hope that you'll enjoy watching this game as much as I enjoy playing it. So uh, I think we're ready to get started, Trish. Yeah, whenever you're ready. If you wanted to give like a quick countdown, you know, three, two, one, and then we'll uh, start the timer when you're good. Sure thing. Time will start as soon as I click new game. So we'll get started in five, four, three, two, one. So this is Dredge. Dredge is uh, a fishing game. And as we know, uh, the difference between a good game and a bad game is a fishing mini game. Uh, so objectively, this is a fantastic game since it's all fishing. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things in the first two minutes here. Uh, I'll try to explain as we go. It's a lot of menuing. Uh, and after that, it'll slow down a little bit more um, so we can kind of enjoy the run. So the first thing here is uh, we're going to come out here. We're going to catch the very first fish we see, which is this mackerel. Uh, we'll have this little bar open up, this little wheel open whenever I am uh, catching a fish. And you want to press the F key every time it's inside those uh, green areas in order to uh, speed up your catch. Uh, if you miss them, uh, uh, there's a little bit of a slowdown. You're locked out for a second from hitting the button. Uh, so you don't want to miss those. You want to make sure you hit those green every time. Uh, we're just going to sell our one measly fish, and that is the only fish we're going to sell uh, for a while now. Uh, ah. The story of this, this game is, is that we crashed our boat, and we're trying to sell fish in order to uh, pay back our debt uh, for the new boat that we bought. Uh, we're not going to do that. We are instead going to destroy the economy of this small fishing town. Uh, the way we do that is we can exploit... The, uh, the good nature of the friendly shipwright, who if you show up to her with no rod and not enough money to buy a rod, she'll give you a new one. Uh, and little does she know that we will sell that rod right back to her over and over again to make about $250 uh, or basically free. Uh, so we've sold three nets now, or three fishing rods now, uh, which will let us buy an extra larger engine. Uh, we'll come out here, we'll buy get one more free fishing rod, sell this back to her, and now uh, we'll collect a fishing rod for real. Uh, this is going to be... We'll install this one here so that we can actually catch some fish, and now we can uh, start the rest of the game here. Um, ooh, actually, sorry, I'm doing the wrong route right now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sleep until day five, uh, so the interesting thing about this game is this is not a regular fishing game. There is, it's there's a little bit something, some stuff going on behind the scenes with it. Uh, there's some spooky fish in the water. There's some uh, interesting characters. So uh, what we're wanting to look for now is we're trying to look for aberrations. So for the 100% speed run, uh, we need to do a few things beyond any percent. So first, we need to catch all of the regular species of fish. Second, we need to catch all the aberrations, which are randomly spawned. Uh, there's ways to manipulate it, and we'll get to that later, but uh, every fish has between one and three different aberrations, and we need to catch all of them. Uh, usually they are randomly spawned. Whenever you catch a fish, you have a chance to catch an aberration. Uh, we need to collect all of the notes, which are just small collectibles uh, throughout the run. Um, we need to meet every uh, NPC, which is just a fancy way of saying we need to uh, unlock both endings. And then uh, we need to complete all the side quests and, of course, complete the main quest at the very end. Um, and we need to also research all the parts for our ship and also uh, upgrade our ship all the way. So we've got a lot of things to do. Uh, the reason we sleep till day five is that aberrations don't appear until the fifth day in-game has passed. 
So uh, there's really no reason for us to do any fishing until day five. Uh, it's basically just wasted time because we are we want those. It's about a three percent chance base. It increases for every non-aberration fish you catch, but ideally we'll only be catching fish uh, when we have a chance to catch that aberration. Because every aberration that we catch uh, as a, as a random spawn is basically one to two minutes saved at the end of the run. Uh, no luck so far, uh, but we'll just head out here. This is one of the notes that we'll have to collect. We'll be collecting 12 of them throughout the run. Uh, and uh, the, the first thing we're, we're doing here is we're catching these cod. So these cod are going to be useful to us to upgrade our equipment. So throughout the game, there are these shrines scattered around with very specific requests written on them. And if you give the shrine what it needs, uh, it's going to give you some little special pieces of fishing equipment. Uh, for example, this shrine has a bunch of pictures of cod on it, and so we know that it wants uh, the cod for the cod god right here. It'll give us this sinew spindle, uh, which is normal looking fishing rod. Don't look too closely at it. Uh, and that was going to let us catch both uh, coastal fish and shallow fish. Fish uh, occur in different areas of the, the ocean, the, of the water. And so we need to make sure we have the right fishing rod in order to catch them. Um, but yeah, so now we're just kind of getting out here. Um, we're gonna get all the fish we need to complete the fishmonger's very first quest. Uh, it's gonna get us some money to upgrade our engines. And uh, also, as a matter of course, kind of let us also progress the first part of the uh, main quest here. So come around the corner here. So uh, Whenever there's some kind of invisible. Second. Yeah. Uh, you, I think you have a Discord mute button, so I cannot hear you. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I, I have un unmuted myself now. <laughs> Let's go. I can hear you again. The last of our uh, technical issues here. Okay, so we have caught an aberration. Uh, that's this guy right here. So you can see we have a grouper, and we have our tusk grouper here, uh, which is the aberration form. Uh, we do need to catch at least one aberration uh, in order to complete the next part of the quest, so that kind of gets that out of the way. Uh, the next thing we're going to catch is these two squids. Uh, we don't really have an ideal inventory right now. Um, this game is also uh, an inventory management simulator. So the more stuff you can pack into your hold, the better. So we have some empty space here. You, you can fit an extra squid in here, but since we did get the uh, Tusked Grouper, we don't need to worry about that too much, and we can just kind of move on with our run here. Uh, let's see. So we'll put all that stuff away. Um, we do have a storage. The storage is shared across all ports, so anything that we pick up and we might need later, we can just go ahead and... Um, Put that into storage and get it later. So now, since we've, we've uh, shown our fancy fish to the uh, the fishmonger, uh, we've gotten the attention of a shady character known as the Collector. Uh, the Collector wants to come talk to us about this uh, this fish we've caught in the a handkerchief that we found inside. And uh, we got nothing better to do yet, so we'll head over to his house and uh, see what he needs. I'm sure it's Nothing, nothing strange or anything. Perfectly normal. Oh no, he's he's perfectly nice. There's there's absolutely nothing uh, that could possibly go wrong. It's just just a normal, uh, you know, house on an island. Yeah, it's fine. I, uh, sorry, I should have replaced that light. I don't know why it went out there. Coincidence. So as you can see, this gentleman here is not a uh, suspicious at all. Uh, he and he gives us. He's, he's a nice guy. He gives us a dredging crane so we can start picking up items that we find along the way. Uh, we'll be picking up quite a few materials. Uh, materials are used to upgrade your ship. Uh, there are three main types of materials: boards, cloth, and spare parts. Um, we'll be picking up probably around thirty or more of each throughout this run. Um, so right here, right off the bat, we'll head over to these cloth. Uh, which is on our way. Uh, I guess I should say what the collector also asked us to do in return for this crane. Uh, he's lost some items that are very dear to him, so uh, we'll just need to make sure we collect those for him. 
Um, right now, he's asked us to find a key that's somewhere around the Marrow Islands. Uh, and luckily, I already know where it is, so we don't need to waste too much time here. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at throughout this run, which kind of makes it different and why I think it's a lot more fun than any percent, I guess the, the spiel for why you should run 100%, um, is in any percent, you don't do as much fishing as, as you might like. And in a fishing game, uh, you know, that's why we're all here, right? Uh, whereas in 100%, we're going to need lots of money. Uh, I haven't exactly figured it out, uh, but it is probably upwards of forty or th uh, thirty or $40,000. Uh, and so basically, whenever we see an opportunity to catch fish that are worth a fair amount of money, for example, these stingrays are worth around $60 each, uh, which is really good for the early game. Uh, we'll definitely want to pick those up. Um, as you've probably noticed, we're very slow right now, and since this is a speed run, we don't necessarily want to be all that slow. Uh, so we're going to be upgrading our engines as soon as possible uh, and getting some real speed behind us here. Um, so we were able to dredge up the key without too much problems. We're going to head back to uh, the collector here, and he's going to give us our very first piece of speed tech, um, which... Oh, we'll talk about briefly here. So he's going to read some stuff out of his book. Uh, what he says doesn't matter. Um, and he gives us the ability Haste. Uh, haste is an extremely useful ability, uh, especially for a speedrun given its name. Um, what it lets us do is it lets us uh, hold down the right mouse button and speed up our travel a little bit. Now, the thing about this is you could just hold it down and wait for the bar to, to uh, fill up, but a quirk of the game is that if you actually mash the haste button, you preserve a little bit of your momen momentum as, the, uh, as it wears down. So the optimal way to actually use haste is just to mash the button as hard as possible um, in order to uh, try to preserve that momentum and... Uh, I must say, you will all, all be spared from the noises it makes. Uh, patch 1.2 made it so that it's much uh, quieter when you do it this way. Uh, before, it would actually just play the haste noise every single time, and the field of view would spam in and out, and it was, frankly, pretty horrible to look at. Um, actually, we do need to head back here and pick up another quest. Um, we're trying to do everything. There's a few things we want to do here. So first... Uh, look up here, we, we did pick up a book. The books are the main barriers in this run, and frankly, when this game becomes very optimized, there's kind of a hard limit on how fast you can play this game because of books. We need to read every single book in the game, um, and you only read books while you're either moving or fishing. You can't just, you know, sit at a dock and sleep all day and expect to read a book. Uh, I have not figured out how to read while sleeping, uh, if you do, please let the developers know so they can add that in. Um, <laughs> we need to read 12 books throughout the game. Uh, they're going to take most of the run. Uh, we'll probably finish them by about the two and a half hour mark. Um, barring any mistakes, the number one mistake that you can make in this run, actually it does just come down to uh, forgetting to read a book. So whenever you read a book, you don't automatically start the next one. You have to actually uh, click through your menu and, and open the book. Uh, so, Kirch, if, if you see that I finished reading a book, and you'll see a little pop-up up here saying a book's been finished reading, uh, if I don't notice it, please feel free to yell at me, because that's going to be a massive time loss if uh, 20 minutes goes by and I realize I haven't been reading. I will be diligent about reading. <laughs> so, Thank you. Something I'm not used to doing. <laughs> now, yeah, see? Now, we got this, let's see, can I dodge this? So, when your terror increases, which it increases most often at night, um, you get these random spawns. Uh, is this going to, okay. So, as your terror increases, you get these random events that happen, uh, which spawn various dangerous things. Uh, in that time, we got the, the, the tornado. Uh, we tried to dodge it, we failed. That's gonna be fine, it's gonna be $30 out of our pockets. We may have to catch a few more extra fish. 
um, in order to make sure that we can afford our bigger engines here. Uh, but it's not going to be the, the end of the world here. Um, you can sleep in town in order to reduce your panic, uh, but each time you do that, it takes about five to ten seconds, which can add up over a run. So if you can get away with not sleeping, uh, you should probably try to avoid it. But sometimes you can't, you can't avoid it, and it's always safer to sleep rather than not sleep. Let's see. I don't actually think I can fit that in my inventory since I've taken haul damage. We'll just head straight into dock here. So this man uh, lost his son in the shipwreck back there, uh, and we gave him a little memento, which he gave us a research part. Uh, research parts are an extremely important part of this run. Uh, we need to research everything throughout this game, uh, and it's going to take, oh man, how many is it? I think, I think it's close to 40, uh, and there are only around 20, 25 research parts spawned throughout the game. We're going to have to either buy or find the rest randomly. We'll talk to the ship right here real quick. Um, sell these stingrays in our in our hold here. And we're gonna go ahead and upgrade our engine. Let's see here, got that. Uh, so now since we bought an upgrade at the dry dock, you can see we have two extra engine slots. So that's a full new engine that we can just add, which basically uh, increases our speed by a factor of one third. So we'll install that in here. Now we're going noticeably faster. Uh, we'll buzz across the way here. Uh, we need to get, un see we've got $12 left. Uh, we need to make sure we get um, 350. So we'll catch, just catch a few more fish here. Uh, groupers are worth a fair amount. And in fact, what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to go ahead and save and quit in Little Marrow to reset the fishing spots. Um, assuming this doesn't fill up my inventory right off the bat. Oh. Yeah, so we're going to head over to Little Marrow here. Um, I can fit one in there. Okay. And I should go fit a stingray in here. We have read a book. So we'll make sure we start our next book right now. We only have two books to read. Um, the route that we're going to be running today, um, it's relatively new. Um, and it prioritizes getting all the books as fast as possible. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about kind of the, the route here in a second, but we want to make sure that we always have a book to read and we're never sort of spending time moving around where we don't have a book. Um, so we are once again going to sell this all to the fishmonger. He wants a, an aberration for himself, which we can't oblige him yet, but we'll see. Um, we're going to go ahead and sleep tonight and then we're going to save and quit. When you save and quit, um, any depleted fishing spots that you collect, that you've already collected, uh, fishing spots or material slots, uh, those automatically respawn. So by saving quitting here, we should be able to head back across the way, pick up those uh, stingrays again. So you can see here that this is a little glowing fishing spot. That means that there's a guaranteed aberration catch here. And since we need an aberration, uh, A, because we need to get all the aberrations to complete the game, and B, uh, we need one for the current quest. Um, we're going to uh, make sure to pick those up. So it looks like those stingrays haven't respawned yet. Um, I think we didn't spend enough time in town to let them respawn, but we have uh, some backups over here. Um, we're going to go ahead and collect the aberration eel here. Uh, basically, whenever I see one of these, as provided that I don't already have all of the aberrations collected for that species of fish, uh, well, I'm always going to go out of my way to pick it up because, like I said, that's a, just a two-minute time save at the very end um, when we're able, we have the the power to actually manipulate um, the aberration spawns. Uh, as you can see, there are some magical rocks that are appearing out of nowhere, trying to confound me. Uh, we will try our best not to run into them, but when you're hasting around at full speed like that. 
uh, sometimes it is unavoidable. So one thing that's going to happen here is we get the two research parts, but now the fishmonger is going to close because he's going to have some nightmares about fish, which who hasn't had nightmares about fish? Luckily, we do have enough money to get everything we need. Uh, we'll go into the dry dock and collect our... and collect the net. We will buy a net, uh, which we'll need for the next part. And with that, we are... Let me make sure to repair that. And with that, we are on our way out of the Marrows. So we're going to take a quick detour over here, um, pick up these boards. Um, in order of usefulness or how many we'll need, uh, boards are by far the, the largest um, material that we'll need to collect throughout the run, uh, followed by spare parts, and then finally cloth. Uh, we still need a lot of cloth, but not as much as the other two. Um, one of the people in Little Marrow gave us a little quest here uh, to build them a, a house on this island. Uh, so we'll make sure to oblige them um, by collecting two boards and two spare parts from the spawns over here. And while we're here, we might as well pick up the rest of the parts as well. So we're going to be returning to this location over and over again to collect parts. Um, once we complete this quest for the builder, um, we won't do it right now because we'd have to go all the way back to Little Marrow and, or Greater Marrow, and we are not. Uh, that's not on our path right now. Uh, so we're just going to put all the parts here, then go inform her of her new house later. Uh, I kind of like how you can actually see that this looks like a little house. I got the boards on the side and a little scrap metal roof. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sleep until morning, and I'll, I'll talk about why in a second here. Um, ooh, actually, there's an aberration spawn. Is that one I can catch? That's an arrow squid. So, the little far away, hmm, I don't think we can get there fast enough. So, this is going to disappear at 6 a.m. So, there's two times of day. There's daytime and nighttime. Oh, I did get it. Uh, at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., or 6 o'clock and 1800, um, the the night fish go to sleep, or, or the, and the day fish wake up. Uh, at the same time, for fish that appear day and night, um, we get another random chance for them to have a glowing fishing spot, which will let us collect it, uh, a random aberration from them. Um, let's look at our inventories. Our inventory's a little bit... There we go, okay. Uh, so we got our inventory we need to go. We need to collect our next book, because we're almost finished with the last book that we have. Um, we'll collect it from a... Uh, frightened courier up here uh, who is justifiably frightened of the ocean. Uh, although I don't know why he chose to live on a boat if he's frightened of the ocean, but who am I to judge? Um, one other thing... Oops, I'm actually going the wrong way. One other thing that we picked up uh, along the way here is before we had could leave Little Marrow, we had to pick up a trawl net. So the trawl net will be really important for the location we're going to next. Um, the, the Trawl Net, uh, normally when you play this game, uh, the Collector will direct you to go to Gale Cliffs, uh, one of the four areas of the game, uh, to kind of, you know, uh, pick up his next little artifact that he needs to... Uh, I'm sure he just wants to put it on his wall. I'm sure he doesn't have any nefarious purposes behind them. Uh, so he wants us to go to Gale Cliffs just because it's, it's a little bit easier of an area. It's a little bit more beginner friendly. Uh, but we don't want to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, there are certain fish there that can only be caught with a deeper fishing rod uh, that can catch fish in the uh, hadal or in abyssal regions of the ocean. Uh, the hadal and abyssal depths of the ocean, I should say. Um, you can't get that until you complete Stellarbation, which is usually the second uh, area you complete. But interestingly enough, uh, you can actually complete uh, Stellar Basin without completing Gale Cliffs first. And in fact, you get uh, some extra fishing rods that will be helpful for us for the rest of the game. So really, it's, it's a lot. And you also get uh, are able to pick up more books, uh, which are uh, 
not only good books, but also very long books. I'm just gonna do a quick check. You weren't reading the book, so it's a good thing you checked. Uh, you also uh, get a lot of some very long books, which take a very long time to read. And since in this game, we wanna make sure we're always reading a book, and it may be a while before we pick up the next one, it's always good to grab a longer book first so you can start reading it earlier. Um, so we're just gonna head over here. Um, the reason we picked up the Troll Net is that there, it's, it's two reasons. One, uh, there are two types of fish in this game that can only be picked up by, uh, by Troll Nets. So the first one is the Aurora Jellyfish, which we need to complete the quest for the researcher here. And the second one is the Anchovy, uh, which we can't collect yet because our, our net isn't upgraded enough. Um, we need to collect not only both these fish by the end of the game, but we also need to make sure that we collect both the aberrations of both these fish, which you can only collect. Um, we're gonna actually throw this out. We're not gonna have a chance to sell that before it rots away. Uh, we also need to collect their aberrations. Now, in patch 1.1, there's they doubled the chance. So we collected, they got the aberration which we need, but we're not done yet. We still need to catch the parhelion jellyfish, which is the um, the aberration of the aurora jellyfish. So. You know, we need to make sure that we can only catch Aurora jellyfish at night since they're, you know, bioluminescent. So we need to make sure that no matter what we're doing in inside the Stellar Basin, we need to make sure we're doing it at night and we need to make sure we have our trawl net out. So we're going to head over here. Um, there's another quest over here, as well as uh, a research part that we can dredge up. And uh, the very most important quest of the run, which I will introduce very shortly here. So over here is the most important NPC of the run, which is the very good boy. Uh, we need to slowly approach, we need to call for him, give him some fish, and then we give him a pet, we give him a pet, give him a third pet, and then we can leave. Uh, and he, he's going to come with us. He's a good boy. Uh, and just to, to force all the questions, yes, there is a pet. Quite easily the most important it's quest ever. Boring. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. So we will. Whenever you've got a second, might have you hit the mute button again. I don't. In a second here, I might have to turn off my. Uh, unbind that key. It's very close to uh, <laughs> yeah. a, another button that I often press. I, I, okay, I, so I had a feeling. A yeah, yeah. All right, so that guy is not friendly, but we'll leave him alone. Um, so we're going to go ahead and sleep till nighttime. We still don't have our, our helium jellyfish yet, so there's no really no reason for us to be moving around during the day. Yeah, I know about the photographer, thank you. Uh, the photographer it was an NPC added in uh, patch 1.2. It just makes the speed run a little bit longer uh, by about five minutes. There's added some extra fish as well, so it's not the end of the world, but it's a little bit annoying. Um, I can't actually repair my net, so we're going to do a little something here. We're going to have to catch a Medusa Octopus for the quest here. So we'll go ahead and sell that Medusa Octopus we, we did catch a trophy. Uh, trophy fish are in gold. They're a little bit more expensive, worth a little bit more. Um, let's see. We'll go into here. We'll grab our crab pot, repair that as well. Now, what we need to do is we need to. Let's see. We're going to drop this off. We're going to drop this about here. We'll pick up this aberration. We'll need a uh, firefly squid anyway for the quest. Now, it's pretty late at night, but we're looking for a floating chest in the middle of the water here, uh, which is going to be kind of annoying to find. It should be about this way. Uh, we don't have any lights, so we're just going to kind of have to go out and guess. And if we don't find it relatively quickly, uh, there's kind of a backup strat to finding it here. And I believe we've passed it. Is that it over there? No. Okay, so here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to go ahead and save and quit.
we're just going to go ahead and sleep until the next day. A little bit of a time loss, but it will at the very least let us find uh, that chest that we need to find, which has some uh, goodies in it, which will get us a lot of money by the very end here. Um, we'll leave just before 5 o'clock and sort of get our bearings here. Ah, there it is. Okay. Uh, so that doesn't have an aberration spawn anymore, unfortunately, since we reset, but not the end of the world. Um, we can certainly make that time up later. Alrighty. So we'll head back over here. Drop off our crab pot. Grab a couple more useful items here. And now we're going to go head over to the researcher to complete her quest. Do we have... Don't yet have a firefly squid. Oh, there we go. You can catch those randomly in the... Um, in your net, so that just saves a little bit of time so we don't have to actually fish it up. Give you the octopus, give you the aurora jellyfish, and give you the firefly squid. She's going to tell us about some equipment that we need to catch deeper fish, uh, which we greatly appreciate. Um, and then we're going to head over to the uh, the floating lab that's over here. We'll make sure to pick up that note since we need to collect all of them by the end here. So if that heat bar in the bottom left ever fills up, one of my engines is going to explode, uh, which as you can imagine, a speed run is not ideal. We're pretty full inventory right now, so I might have to throw something out. Uh, I meant to throw the stuff into storage uh, before we left, but I might actually have just enough space. Yeah, we'll have enough space. Got all these research parts, and now we're going to head straight back. Uh, still doing it all at night. We're still looking for the Parhelion jellyfish. Well, we don't actually have room in our net for one yet, so we'll make some room just in case. Um, <laughs> we are going to leave that Medusa jellyfish for now, or that Medusa octopus. Um, the reason being is, right after we finish this quest, we need to make $750 as fast as possible. And Medusa octopuses are just the best way to make money um, here in Stellar Basin. So we're going to make sure to leave all those spawns as full as possible. All right, we need to make sure we have enough room for everything. Let's see, I have four spots left. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. Might fit, but we made it made it work. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and sleep until nighttime so we can fish for that Parhelion jellyfish again. It's not the end of the world if we don't get it before we're done in Stellar Basin. Uh, we have some backup strategies that we can use, and we will be back here later to make sure we uh, finish out all the aberration spawns. Uh, but it'd be nice if we got it right now. That would save us uh, quite a bit of time in the long run. We got a dollar to our name. We need to make uh, 750 by the end of this. Um, Medusa octopus, unfortunately, are not the best shape to fit everything together, uh, but we can make do. Um, there is also a trinket over here that's worth a fair amount of money. We might as well just pick that up on our way. Oh, there's a friendly, uh, friendly boat in the, the distance. Should make sure to honk back at them to say hello. Uh, I'm oh, a big yeah, believer sure. in honk strats. Oh, yeah.
just a nice friendly boat. <laughs> Nothing could yeah. possibly go See, wrong. See, they hung back at us. Yeah. I'm a big believer in Hong strats. I think that it, uh, they keep bring good luck to the run, so we'll make sure we'll try to find out good opportunities to honk. All right, so one thing we can do, so our storage is very full right now. One thing we can do is we can actually store the things that we've picked up into the floating dock. Even if we don't uh, immediately buy the upgrade, it'll at least free up some room for us uh, to store other things. Um, we can also research uh, we'll need to research this bigger, fathomless winch. Um, we will later need the anti-tangle line, and uh, we'll research the efficient crab pot. Uh, the efficient crab pot uh, is basically just a passive money maker for us. Uh, just it catches some crabs over time, uh, which can be pretty useful. Um, let's see. We need to go over here to where we left our crab pot, and we're gonna pick it up. It'll have a spiny lobster in it. Uh, which we need to catch all of the crab pot fish by the end of the game anyway. Oh, okay. So this is... We dodge! Okay. That one's actually really difficult to dodge, so I'm quite happy that we were able to uh, nice. not get eaten by that shark there. Let's see. Let's go to the fish market and sell this. Um, we're going to go ahead and sleep till night and pick up some more Medusa, some more uh, glowing octopuses here. Do you take a fixed amount of damage, uh, or does like every different disaster do a different amount of damage? So, m the the shark, um, there's a giant tentacle. Th those are all, uh, and some of the the static zone uh, dangers. Those will all do. Uh, those all appear when you have the maximum amount of terror, uh, as seen by a red eye up there. Those yeah. will all do two damage. Um, some of the more more common ones that can occur at lower uh, terrors, like a whirlwind, that'll do one damage, and just bonking into things will do one damage. Um, right now, I only have three health, so I need to take three damage, and then one more will sink me. As I upgrade the boat, I will get uh, a little bit extra damage uh, buffer there. Um, but the other thing that when you take damage is it, it picks up inventory slots in your hold. Um, it can actually disable uh, your your equipment, like your engines or your fishing lines. It can damage crab pots. It can damage your trawling nets. So it's it's generally, you know, it's not the end of the world if we take damage. We can just repair ourselves. Um, the only time we might have to reset as a as uh, as part of taking damage is if it actually breaks one of our engines, um, and if we're really far away from a dock to fix it, because that can be a pretty massive time loss. Um, get one more in here. Almost, but not quite. Oh, we can get the glowing squid, hopefully. So hopefully this won't give it to me. Ah, dang. So... We were fishing there when it turned to, to 6 a.m., so we lost our opportunity to catch that fish, or catch that uh, radiant squid. Getting closer. Uh, we're gonna sleep till night again. Actually, so we need to catch, in order to, for an aberration to show up, you need to have caught at least one of the normal type of fish. Uh, and it's pretty embarrassing when you try to catch a fish, uh, an aberration, and you haven't caught a normal fish yet, and it, it uh, depletes the area. So uh, we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen and just catch uh, some of these daytime uh, stellar basin fish just to make sure that we have caught at least one of them at some point in our life. All right, 750 bucks. Let's go to the shipyard. Uh, she's going to give us a book which will let us sell things for slightly more money, which we're very interested in. Um, we found this. So we're going to repair and then sell the net. If you repair the net before you sell it, it's actually worth more than the cost to repair it, uh, which is interesting economics, but what do I know? Um, we are on our way out of here, so we'll grab the repulsor. Um, we need to check our crab pots to make sure that we have at least a blue crab. We do have a blue crab. 
Uh, we'll need that for the next part of the game. We'll just clear these out. Crown of Thorns aren't worth enough and they take up a lot of slots, so we'll just throw that one away. Um, we'll store our last crab pot. And now we're going to uh, finish up with Stellar Basin here. So the researcher gave us, so if you look inside here, inside uh, what's, what's technically called a blue hole, uh, you can see that there's some uh, friendly little tentacles in there. Uh, the friendly little tentacles don't love it if you uh, sail over the top of them. And unfortunately, it's actually guarding uh, one of the relics that we need to collect. So the researcher gave us some equipment that we can put in this generator, which will allow us to actually uh, stop the friendly little tentacles from attacking us. Um, as part of it, we'll also complete her quest by grabbing an anglerfish. Let's see how this need to go. Let's go there. We will grab the gulper eel, which is uh, one of the one-of-a-kind fish. Uh, we will definitely take a trophy of that, uh, since that's worth more money. Got the snailfish. Amphipod. And then here is the ring. So an interesting little thing about the uh, the rings is that whenever you look at the descriptions, the descriptions change depending on how much terror you have. Uh, since we're, we're at maximum terror, this says the void creeps into whatever cavities it can. And she said yes. Uh, not ominous at all. Seems perfectly normal to me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Just Actually, another day at sea. To... Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you find uh, engagement rings at sea. That, that's happened to everyone. So we're going to head back here to sell the gulper eel. Um, fish stay fresh for 24 hours. Uh, after 24 hours, they become stale and they're worth slightly less. And then after uh, another 12 hours, they become rotten, which are worth 30%. Uh, and then after another 12 hours, they actually turn into rot, which you can't sell anymore. Um, so since we need so much money throughout this run, uh, it's just generally worth it for us to try to sell those more expensive fish uh, whenever it's convenient for us. Um, let's see, I'm just going to check my book. We're almost done with that book. This is probably a little bit risky. Um, since we are at maximum terror, um, we need to catch one more loose jaw over here. Okay, um, so that's one of the that's one of the better random events that we can get at this point. Um, that just gives a little some gross little goo on one of our fish. Uh, that makes it worth as much as if it was rotting, uh, but it makes it last longer in the long run. Weirdly enough, so since we're not actually selling these, just turning these in for a quest, um, we'll take that because it also means that something worse isn't going to spawn. Amphipod. She's going to tell us that everything's been mutating. We already know. We've seen all the mutated stuff. And she gives us a book, which is important. Um, she's been so helpful that we will give her... Our, we'll have to say goodbye to our dog. And uh, I think she'll give it a good home. And the dog brings us a nice little ring. So it's all good. We're just going to try to get our terror below 100% here. We finished reading a book, so we'll start reading Art of Silver Tongue, which will increase the amount of things to sell for, which is always good. Um, now, let's see what we gotta do. We gotta pick up these. Uh, before we head back with our haul, or with our ring to the collector, um, we're gonna go see a man uh, about a book. Um, like I said, this route is sort of structured around getting all the books as fast as possible to make sure that you're always have something to read, um, since that's the, the big sort of stumbling block. Um, I've had a few runs where I've gotten to the end of the game and uh, had a really good time, and then I've had to just sit uh, in the ocean doing spins, uh, reading a uh -oh, book for no. like 15 minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty heartbreaking. We'll go to the fish market. We'll sell this. We need to keep these fish in our inventory, so it'd be pretty catastrophic for us to sell those right now. Um, we do have those. We're going to 
basically whenever we have the opportunity, we will dredge up materials. Um, it's really not a time loss uh, as long as you're not going out of your way because while you're dredging, you're reading a book. And like I said, there's sort of a finite amount of time we have to spend either traveling or reading or traveling or, or uh, fishing or dredging. So, you know, might as well spend it now. So, doesn't matter if these fish uh, become stale or rotten, um, since we're just going to be giving them away to uh, a delightful man who doesn't care what state they are. Uh, so actually, I should mention right there, so we did, there's an 8% chance, a 7 or 8% chance that we leave whenever you dredge up material to get a research part. Uh, that is huge for us. That is like the number one RNG in this run is making sure that you get uh, as many research parts as you can while dredging material. Uh, we're going to be dredging a lot of material, which theoretically means that we're going to be getting a lot of res random research parts. Uh, unfortunately, it does not always go that way. Uh, so we're going to be hoping for research parts. Every time it happens, it's a very good thing. Um, and then it's, it's just, again, it's another kind of two minutes at the very end here uh, that we can save. Um, so we're going to once again try to get the great glowing radiant squid. We get it. Uh, we won't bother taking it with us because it's going to rot by the time we can actually sell it. Um, let's see, we need to do, this one's, a, I think I didn't leave space in my inventory, and that's just because this is new in patch 1.2, uh, and within like the last month or so. Um, there is an extra quest that we need to complete, uh, which is the photographer. The photographer needs us to get her, um, her, her lens, which she lost over here. We'll pick that up for her. Um, that'll just, you know, make sure we can 100% this game properly. Uh, what are you? You're a ghost shark. Uh, that's going to reset. So no point getting that. Um, we're just going to do a quick safety since our terror is so high. Uh, we're going to dock here and just do a Oh, yeah, that's very good. So those uh, birds would have eaten the fish that I grabbed uh, and set us back like five or five or six minutes. So we're very happy that we managed to sleep there before they showed up. Um, and now we can head over here and complete this quest. That's a really brutal random event. <laughs> yeah, it's some of them. I'm going to be honest, some of them, if they happen in like the first like 30 minutes, it's just like, all right, I mean, this this runs done, you know? Yeah. Uh, any percentage is even worse. It's because, you know, this game is new enough and not very many people run 100 percent so this game's not very optimized you can kind of you know if you're if you're, if you're trying to be competitive you can still sort of soak up a few random events a few bad luck a few mistakes but any percent is so optimized right now that if you get any sort of um bad events bad rng it's just an instant reset uh which is another reason why i, I like uh, the categories that i run because it's a little bit more forgiving uh let's let's even have a little bit more fun with the game So this actually adds an extra dock to the game, which is actually really useful. In, uh, before, we'd have to head all the way uh, north before we could save, uh, which could go very poorly for us. Uh, but here, we can talk to this this lady. We can uh, go ahead and get the uh, quest completed. And then we can start heading over uh, back to Blackstone in order to complete that quest. That's a friendly whale, don't worry. Actually friendly this time. Not sarcastically friendly. <laughs> okay, so we will go ahead and give this ring to the collector. Oops, we actually need to have it in our inventory to give it to him.
So now we have the ability manifest. The ability manifest lets us teleport back to Blackstone Isle whenever we want, uh, which is going to be super useful uh, since it's just a lot less time that we have to spend actually sailing around. Um, we'll, we'll ignore the hull damage I just took. Um, do some quick dredging. And while we're here, we still need lots of money. So we're going to go ahead and fish up these stingrays. Um, how can I fit these efficiently? Oh, okay. We're going to ignore that one too. Uh, this is the trader. The trader will buy things that we dredge up along the way or find in shipwrecks. Um, so these, these jewels, these chains, these uh, lockets, bags of doubloons. Uh, he's a friendly guy. Uh, we won't come back and see him too many times, but he does give us a book if we sell him a certain number. Um, the other thing, last thing we have to do in Little Marrow is we picked up this package a while ago, uh, and this will go ahead and... This? this will let us get... Um, actually, we don't get anything from this, I don't think. Yeah, we just complete the quest. But at least he's happy. We'll go check on him later. I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure there's yeah, nothing in sure. that uh, package. Yeah, it just look. There was there was some stuff leaking out of the sides of the package. There was some black ooze involved. I'm I'm sure it was a normal package though. It was probably just like ink or something, right? Yeah, he's 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 you know really big into like calligraphy. You know, what yeah. Good for him. Uh, so somebody in chat was asking about the haste ability. Uh, you are just mashing the button, right? You're basically just pressing it or clicking it on and off. Yep, exactly. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on... Uh, there's, there's sort of an ideal cadence for you to click on um, in order to make sure that you, uh, you know, build up the least amount of heat while preserving the least, most amount of speed. Um, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on the haste thing while I'm, I'm mashing the button to try to make sure that uh, I'm not overheating. But otherwise, yeah, you're just kind of clicking as fast as possible. Um, and really just holding down the button as little as possible. Uh, that's kind of the other main thing. So uh, we if you guys remember, uh, we built the house a while ago. Uh, so we're going to go drop off the builder at the house. Uh, one of the funny things about this game is that... Ooh, is that something gonna be really tight. We're gonna try to get this Stingray spawn. Nope, okay. We don't have enough time to catch another one. So, one of the funny things about this, I like about this game is you can just, like, pick up and move people around in your hold. <laughs> uh, and they can actually be lost overboard if you take damage, or you can just actually just throw them overboard. Uh, oh. Which, I, I just think it's a fun touch. I don't know. Does that, uh, does that, like, Kill them? Like, can you get them back here? Nope, they're gone. They're gone forever. Yeah. Oh! oh. And then, <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna not do that because that is uh, counts as a bad end to this quest. But uh, it's it's possible. That's uh, yeah. I, that's I love the touch, it, it but that's terrifying. Yeah. Well, for the purposes of achievements, uh, it does count as "quote unquote" completing the quest, uh, since the achievement is just complete all of the, the quests, one way or another. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, so one thing I'll say is, is uh, back in the original version of this game, um, so we we have there's there's four figures, uh, rogue figures that we have to give certain fish to, uh, which they eat in a very. Uh, raw state um, <laughs> and in the old days you had to give them all the fish within I think like three days or they would all starve to death and you couldn't complete the uh, fully complete the game anymore uh, luckily they took that out so they get some snacks in between so they won't starve to death if you uh, neglect them for a while <laughs> or forget about them <laughs> yeah you know I, on my first casual ooh, so we're going to grab this again it is, these always show up right at, at 4 o'clock my first casual playthrough of this game uh, blew up an engine. We can we can fix that. Uh, my first casual playthrough of this game, I got through most of the game. I came back to one of the figures to complete his quest, and he was just dead. I was like, okay. I mean, I've spent like eight hours on this save. 
I guess I'm going to reset. Oh no! Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Uh, luckily, one thing I'll say is that the uh, the developer of this game, Joel, he's very responsive uh, to the needs of the speedrun uh, community. Um, he's like like I mentioned, you know, hay spamming used to be a lot worse. It used to play the sound over and over again, so it was just a kind of I, honestly, I turned off the game audio because it was just like it was so grating <laughs> on your ears. Yeah. Uh, so he's done that. He's he's made a bunch of other little tweaks, moving some fish around to make it a little bit more easy. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate how attentive he is to the speedrunning community. Um, okay, so let's see here. So we got a lot of stuff here. Do we have enough money to... Yes, we can get the ne the first upgrade of our haul. Um, so what that's going to do for us is... We have, a little bit, we have a little bit more cargo space. We have one extra damage we can take. Um, the next thing we'd like to do is upgrade our cargo space even more before the next area. Uh, we don't have a, quite enough spare parts for that. We'll, we'll make sure to grab those. Uh, but we'll we'll store we'll make some room in our storage by uh, moving our materials into the cargo bay here. Uh, we'll do a quick book check, and kind of wish we weren't leaving at seven o'clock at night. We might get some bad RNG um, as far as um, terror events. But oh, you know what? I blew up the engine. We're just going to save and quit. We're going to sleep till morning. It's a sign. It's we're at about uh, 55 minutes. Do you want to just take a break here then? Since we're at the yeah, it's perfect time to take the break before we start the next area. Yeah, perfect. All right. So during these longer speed runs, uh, we like to take breaks every hour. So just everybody can get up, stretch, get some water, anything they need to do. Uh, just before we go to the break, a quick reminder, uh, Games Done Quick is hiring. If you have any experience in social media creation and want to help out at our live events, be sure to go to gamesonquick.com slash jobs to apply. Uh, with all that said, we're going to be back after just a quick break here with more of the run. See you in a few minutes, everyone. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. We are in the middle of a dredge 100% speed run. I will hand it right back over and we can get right back into it. Uh, so we'll uh, undock here and we'll get started again. So uh, what we're doing before the break is we're heading to a new area here. Um, I did say we were going to sleep until morning and then completely forgot to. So let's just make sure we don't run into anything here and uh, try our best not to uh, take any more damage. So we're going to head to the back behind Little Marrow here again to this familiar shipwreck. Uh, fun fact, can't actually run into the shipwreck. Uh, it doesn't do any damage. So there's a few obstacles like that, uh, which are um, quite fun to find because you can run into them as fast as you want and it will do no damage to yourself. Uh, one of them like that is all the docks. So it's, it's always fun to uh, Tokyo drift your way into the docks uh, and just sort of bounce off. But what we'll be he doing now is we'll be heading over to Gale Cliffs, which is, uh, for us, the second area of the game. For most people, it'll probably be your first. Um, kind of the reason we're doing this one second is we're going to get a very important item, uh, which will really open up uh, a lot of areas for the game. That's going to be the explosive charges. Uh, explosive charges will let you uh, open up uh, certain blockages, uh, which can open shortcuts, can open up um, extra little areas, um, and we'll need them to 100% the game because two types of fish are uh, locked behind uh, the explosives uh, charges. Uh, we're going to head over here to this figure in blue. He's very, very hungry, uh, and we'll give him a little mackerel. Uh, he's going to tell us that he wants a different type of mackerel too, which we don't have for him. So we're just going to uh, leave him alone and... Uh, Luckily, that's the guy I was talking about earlier, who he used to be able to starve to death. Uh, since he can no longer starve to death... Ooh, I've got an interesting inventory here. Uh, okay, we can make this work. So since he can no longer starve to death, we're basically free to leave him for the next 10 or 12 days or so, uh, and just continue on uh, with our merry fishing way. Um, so here's another kind of piece of tech that you kind of need to keep track of when you're entering your run. That any time you find... Um, 
a wreck or a chest or something that has an item in it that you can equip, for example, the, this weak valve engine or the basic fishing pole, because you can't keep these in your inventory, you can only ever equip, uh, install them, they ha the game has to give you access to your storage. Well, we're going to take advantage of that, and we're going to store all of our items, that, even the ones that are not in the, uh, in the chest. Uh, we're also going to reinstall this over here, just to make a little bit more room. Uh, and we'll throw these all into storage. Now we've got a big empty inventory, uh, and they can do whatever we want with that. We can fill it with all sorts of things. Uh, we're going to head here behind Ingfell, which is this lovely town right here. And we're going to just dredge up a couple boards. Um, right now it's about to become nighttime. That's good for us. We do want it to be nighttime before we kind of start doing the main quest here. Um, we will need to catch a, an eel, which only spawns at night. We want to do that sort of as soon as possible. Because um, we're going to need to let that eel rot. We're going to pick up two boards there. Um, I don't like the time, so I don't want to miss this opportunity here. Ah, write a book. Let's see what should we read next. Let's read Advanced Fishing. Did I actually read it? No, okay, there we go. Get our crab pots again, and we will actually buy an extra crab pot. Um, make sure we repair all of them. And these ones, so the thing about crab pots is they catch different fish at different depths. You can kind of see in the bottom left what depth I'm at. Um, so for these fish, for these crabs, we want to make sure we're leaving them at less than five meters. Um, so that'll make sure we can catch all the types of crabs that exist here in the gale cliffs. I'm going to head around the corner here. I've blown up one of my engines, but we're going to keep going, I think. And just be a little more careful. Um, right now we have three engines, so losing one of them isn't the end of the world unless I bonk. There we go. So that is the object of our quest right here, is this, uh, this whalebone crest. Unfortunately, it's being guarded by a serpent. So we're going to go hide behind the waterfall. There's a chest in here, which we can loot for these uh, refined metals. Now we can leave again. So I've made a big stink about catching the eel, but we never actually caught him. So we'll head over here and actually grab this eel. This is a little dangerous. Okay, there we go. We made it out alive. Um, the serpent can come while you're trying to catch that eel and uh, really mess your day up. He does two damage. Um, he's one of those fixed dangers I was talking about that does two damage each. Uh, so we really, really don't want to get hit. The next big danger is we really don't want to roll birds because the birds are going to steal the eel, uh, which is really not what we want to happen here since we need it for a quest here in a second. There is a dock up there, uh, which we can sleep to reset our terror, so hopefully we'll get there before the birds attack. Another thing is we can, uh, let's see what we do, look at the campfire, kick the ashes for another research part. Always useful. We'll sleep for a couple hours here, not too long. And I believe we want to head around the corner into here to pick up another note. There we go. Notes are one, another one of the things that you always need to remember in the 100% speed run, because you just get so used to ignoring them in literally any other category. Uh, it's so easy just to, to drive right by them and not even think about picking them up. And then you get to the end of the run, and it's like, okay, well, got to spend 10 minutes backtracking to try to figure out which note I forgot to grab. Yeah, especially since there's not, like, any kind of, like, uh, collectibles on the map or anything, so it's like, oh, well... <laughs> You, you really just got to remember where everything is, yeah. Yeah. And and, for, and they're not even, like, organized very well by uh, by location, so you just kind of be like, okay, I don't have uh, September 15th, 1927. Oh, man, where was that one yeah. <laughs> um, So we'll go to the retired whaler here. Uh, so what's going on right now is that there's these two brothers 
um, who are, they're in a quarrel. See, the, the brother who lives over on the, the side, um, he lost the whalebone crest that we found, uh, but we found it for him. Uh, and so we're trying to let him move back into town because right now he just lives on uh, a place that looks like it's going to fall into the water any second here. So what he's, the, the older brother's asked us to do is, is detonate some shaped charges he's set to open up a little path back here. And that will also give us access to buying more explosives from him later. So we're going to head over here. There's a research part we can pick up. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of manipulation here. So this is sort of a, a speed tech. So normally, if, if, if in your casual playthrough, you'll just run straight through the arches and the serpent will just sneak up on you while you're going through the text boxes to blow up the charges and will attack you. If you hug this left wall and just haste as fast as possible into here, you can actually get in here, blow up the charges, uh, and then get out even before uh, the serpent comes for you. Um, I have also remembered that I am on one of your engines. You need to make sure we go repair that just so we can speed up a little bit. Um, let's see. Yep, so you can see the serpent's right there on the ground. He got confused. He thought we were out here. Uh, and so we're just going to give him the slip. There we go. Let's get faster. Put this away. And we're a little low on money right now, but we can live with that. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to pick this up, pick this up. We're about done with uh, Gale Cliffs. We need to keep... Oops. Let's go into our floating dock and store some more parts. In fact... With this. All right, got that eel that's stale. We can sell those engines. We got some extra cash now. Um, not quite as much as I would like to have at this point of the game, um, but you know we'll have an, a pretty good opportunity later to make some very fast money. Um, so we'll uh, just keep an eye out for the more of those money making opportunities. Go to the whaler. He says that his little brother can come, come back, so we'll go collect him. Ah. <laughs> We're sticking with the crabs. He's comfy there, don't worry. Um, I was about to say we need to watch out for rocks, because we, if we run into a rock, it's possible we'll just lose the, the whaler's brother overboard. Uh, luckily, that didn't happen. We'll just uh, keep going here as if nothing happened. Uh, they made up. They're friends now. Go to the whaling yard. We can pick up this explosive. And we're going to buy all of the rest of his explosives as well. Uh, just short on money, but that's okay because we have a quest here that we can complete. Uh, this eel that we picked up has been fermenting pretty nicely in our uh, storage. But it's not quite uh, as stinky as it could be. So we want to we wanna sleep until... Uh, this says that it's rotting. There we go, rotting. Now, this woman right here with the very sad-looking dog, the dog is, is very apologetic because he ate uh, the eel that she had been fermenting in a, in a jar for uh, several days. So we need to get her an quote-unquote aged... Um, oops, let me go pick up something before we leave. We could get her an aged conger eel, which is just another way of saying rotten. So that's why we wanted to pick up that eel as quickly as possible so we could make sure that it uh, became rotten as quickly as possible. Going to here, we will need three explosives. We can put away those two. We'll repair that hull damage in a second here. Um, but otherwise, we are about to be on our way out of here. We will blow our way through these rocks. That's what I was talking about with the explosive charges, which lets you open up little secret areas. This secret area will give us the, some more refined metal, which we'll need later in order to upgrade our uh, ship. So one last thing we're going to do before we leave, and this is why we do Stellar Basin first, um, is behind the waterfall, you may have noticed that there was a large fish down here. This is the ore fish. Or fish is an abyssal fish, so it uh, requires that you have a, a very deep fishing rod in order to uh, fish it out. Rearrange your inventory a little bit, just fine. 
So by doing Stellar Basin first, we can catch that ore fish right away without having to come back for it later. Um, so it's just a little bit of an efficiency to make sure you're kind of doing things uh, in an order that makes it as, as fast as possible. Um, and I guess I should mention that you do not need the uh, explosives at any point in Stellar Basin. So we can just sort of skip that whole thing. It's another uh, shrine. This one needs crabs. By getting the crabs, we now get the Mouth of the Deep, which is a totally normal crab pot. Nothing, nothing spooky about it at all. Uh, and it happens to be the best crab pot in the game. Oh, so we've made one of the classic blunders of the speed run, uh, which is we've forgotten to pick up the um, the music box. Uh, this is something that I do pretty frequently because I usually want my bird category is all fish. We just catch all the fish as fast as possible. Uh, and we don't care about relics during that. So we're going to have to make a quick detour all the way back to Gale Cliffs, pick up the music box. Uh, it's about a five, six minute time loss. It is what it is. We just got to live with it. I mean, these kinds of things do happen too in 100% runs where you like you have so much to keep track of and it's really hard, especially when the game doesn't keep track of that kind of stuff for you. Like, Oh, which absolutely. Isn't a knock on this game or the developers, but it's like definitely I... I I really appreciate when games are like, you have completed this area. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, for or sure. Or like, hey, you missed something. You need to figure out what that is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, oh, I dodged this. Oh, no. Okay. That's fine. Uh, yeah. I, the, I refer to it as like, you just have to keep so much in working memory at any given time, um, which is just sort of kind of the fault of this route. Um, it's just, there's so much going on at any given time. There's so many things you need to be keeping track of. Uh, it's just, it's so easy to forget things. Um, as a consolation prize, we do, we'll hopefully be able to get a, a stonefish aberration here. Oh, but our sinew spindle broke apart from the shark, so no aberration for us. Oh, no. Unfortunately. Unfortunate indeed. So when your fishing rods are broken, uh, either by running into things or from an event, you can still technically fish up the fish, uh, but you won't be able to, you know, press F in order to uh, speed up your your catch. And it's just generally very, very slow. And since we're going to have an opportunity later in order to, um, we actually need to sleep a little bit because manifest is not cool down. Uh, since we're going to have an opportunity later to get all the aberrations in a pretty fast way, uh, it's a nice to have, not a necessity right now. All right, back to where we were. So he's gonna give us our third ability, which is Banish. Banish is gonna let us, um, if we get into a pinch and we really need to, um, if, if we really need to uh, get rid of an enemy that's coming at us or, or a random event that's going to ruin the run, we can just go ahead and banish it and uh, that'll let us uh, sort of despawn it, basically. Uh, we will use it strategically during certain parts of the run, uh, but also it's just a good uh, panic button uh, in case things are you haven't saved for a really long time and you're about to uh, get birded or something like that. We're gonna do a few things while we're in town here. We're going to see, we should be able to Get an upgraded engine here. Uh, we're going to go to the trader to sell some of the things we've picked up. Should hopefully give us enough money here. Um, let's check our storage. Yeah, I think we need some more spare parts. We're going to stop over here to grab some extra spare parts. And we'll hopefully be able to get a bigger engine, which will speed up our travel. We're also collecting these sharks because they're worth a fair amount of money and our inventory is not going to be full by the end of this. Can we fit this? Mm, doesn't look like it. 
I think I would rather have the sharks than the boards right now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a few things here. Um, we will go ahead and take out our crab pots. We will repair them and repair our engine that we broke. We will sell our inefficient, our basic crab pot. Go to the dry dock to buy a bigger engine. There we go. We go to the shipwright. Now, should we be able to afford this engine? Yes, we will. That's going to make us much faster here, which is always good. Uh, we're actually going to put these into storage. We'll pick them up at Steel Point here in a second. Uh, I believe that's all we want to do in town here. We'll dry dock this. Yeah, and then we can store some extra parts. Okay. So we are pretty low on parts here, uh, spare parts. So what I'm going to do is I am going to save and quit. We'll continue. And now about a minute and a half ago, oh, you can see how much faster we are now. These, these spare parts have now respawned since we saved and quit. I'm paranoid, so I'll check if I'm reading a book. I think you are still, but... It's, you know, the way, the way I always say is it's never a time loss to check if you're reading a book, because the one time that you aren't reading a book when you thought you were, that's when you save, like, ten minutes. It's one in, yeah. <laughs> And it helps that it's not like the. It's not very uh, lengthy to go see it. Like you can just open it up real quick. It's not a big deal. Yep, for sure. So it's 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 always worth it, in my opinion. If there's ever a question, just check. All right, so. Uh, I have a nice little house here now. Uh, we should be able to talk to her. And she's going to give us access... Well, she gives us a book, and she's going to give us access to our storage here, which is super useful uh, since there's a respawning parts location right next to her. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab all of our repaired crab pots. We do need to make sure we grab an explosive for later. We'll come over here, pick up the rest of these spare parts, and then we'll move on to the next area, uh, which is Twisted Strand. Ooh, one more here, nice. Uh, we should be moving more to the northwest like this. Twisted Strand is by far my least favorite area. Um, it is a, a horrible maze. Uh, you at this point of the game, you're traveling super fast, so it's easy to run into walls. Uh, it's I get so turned around all the time. Oh man! We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how much time I spend getting lost inside Twisted Strand. <laughs> I believe. So we got a research part out here. Um, we will have an opportunity to dock for our storage before we get into it. Uh, we'll pick up the dog tags here. We'll need the dog tags for a quest, um, which we'll do for the, the airman who lives inside a twisted strand. Um, we can pick up one board. We need uh, six inventory slots. 
Now we're looking for a gray mullet. And on our way, we'll just go ahead and drop our crab pots here, here, and here. Let's see. So we can use a telescope to find uh, fish spawns, which you see me do sometimes if we're kind of looking in the open ocean. Grabbing this gray mullet here. We'll need three of these guys. Now, the thing about Twisted Strand is that there, uh, your, your terror matters more than any other area. Uh, hmm. Let me just get through there and I'll explain why. Good, we can afford that. So in Twisted Strand, there are certain blockages that appear or disappear depending on what your current terror is. So we want to go in with zero terror and keep it at zero for as, as much as we can so that we never have an a situation where we're getting blocked. Uh, like that. So this should disappear within a few uh, seconds here. There we go. Uh, and we have put away our explosive. I think it's going to be faster for us to save and quit. We'll continue again. We need to make sure, again, this is one of the things where there's just so much that you need to remember. We need to make sure we have an explosive in our inventory. Uh, we will actually purchase another explosive um, just to have on hand. Back around the corner. Blockage is gone this time, which we like. Ah. So in Twisted Strand, we need to collect the two parts of the mortar uh, and also three dog tags uh, from the airman's, who we'll meet in a second, uh, from his friends. Three parts of the mortar will help us defeat the main enemy of this area, uh, which are called Mind Suckers. Uh, we will hopefully not encounter them uh, in a in a way that's going to hurt us, but um, we'll show them off if we have to. That's a mind sucker right there. If he catches you, he will increase your terror by a lot and very quickly. Uh, and so by avoiding that, we will avoid those um, the issues you're running into before with those those blockers. So we want to avoid the mind suckers as fast as much as possible. So, oops. Well, we just ran straight into one. I was looking. I was looking for uh, for this spot right here. Hopefully, I'll be able to fish this up before it comes over and increases my terror. So we need to take a little bit. and stay on. Oops. I think we need to stay on the outside over here. Find the last dog tag. Oh. I hate this strand so much. This looks incredibly confusing. Yeah, it's... You know, the other 100% speedrunner loves it because he says it makes it... Uh, that, that's uh, Husa, uh, SR. He likes, he likes it because uh, he says it makes it feel like Mario Kart. And uh, I'm also very bad at Mario Kart, so maybe that's why. <laughs> All right. So we're going to use this explosive to get through this little shortcut here. Um... Unfortunately, we don't have the inventory room. We did since we took some damage, we're probably gonna go have to repair before we do finish the rest of this quest. We need all of our inventory uh, to be open. She's, he's gonna ask us for the pieces of mortar, which we happily give to him. Uh, and then we'll give him some bait from our storage, which is the fish that we caught earlier. So we'll do a few things here. We need to get out this. Um, we will go ahead and complete the dog tag quest. Oops. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head... back to the pontoon to repair uh, our ship. Let's see, what can I fit in here? Not very much. Uh, we're going to have a very tight... Ooh, only mud crabs can't fit those. We're gonna have a very tight fit. We're gonna be holding a lot of things in our inventory 
Uh, so we just want to make sure that we have room for everything. Let's sell that. Let's sell that. Should have enough to repair our ship. Um, explosive bait. Um, no, we can actually bait this here. So that, we're taking kind of a, a weird route with that one. Um, normally we wouldn't drop that bait right then. Um, just because we would do it in a little bit more efficient way. But since we're kind of um, trying to work around the damage to our hull, uh, we'll just drop that right now. Just to get it out of the way. In fact, no, maybe don't do it. So this will be all the stuff we need for the other two pieces of bait that we need to kill all the bind suckers. Okay, we're going to take a quick... We're going to drop our... Uh, Fathomless reel back into storage just so we have enough room in our inventory. I'll kind of show I can show you guys actually what we're doing with the bait here, what the, the plan is. So we got on the pieces of the mortar. So what we need to do is we need to get these mine suckers into the traps uh, in order to give them a good target to shoot at here. Because uh, fishing with explosives is obviously the most e uh, efficient way to do things. Makes sense to me. So I'll kind of show you. So the mine sucker, this is what he looks like. He's going to come towards the trap, munch on this delicious fish that we gave him. Whoops. Pretty brutal. Uh, then we'll pick up his corpse as proof of our deeds. So here's... I, I want... I want to show you guys something because this so one thing about this game is this game has so much love and care put into it and there's so many little details that i'm still discovering um as as i play this game even you know hundreds of hours in um so i don't want to spoil it here but I we're going to take a quick detour uh we wouldn't do this oh i'm not lost okay we wouldn't do this in an actual speed run because it wastes a little bit of, uh about two minutes but i want to show you guys a little something that actually happened so we dropped the bait off for Mind Sucker, and we gotta get back to the airman as fast as possible. Oh, we got lost. Oh no. Ah, we missed it actually, because I got lost in Twisted Strand. But what happens is is you can actually see that the mor the airman has a mortar, and he actually launches uh, a mortar at the dock and actually has a whole animation for it and everything. Uh, which normally you wouldn't see because you'd just be waiting for the uh, the mind sucker to get hit. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of neat. It's it's little stuff like that that really really makes me love this game more and more the more I play it. That's actually really awesome that they took the time to actually you know go through with that in the off chance that somebody was able to catch it. Oh, absolutely. The only way I found out about it is because uh, I forgot to grab an extra explosive for this next part. Uh, so I had to go. I had to run back while I was waiting for the mortar to go off, and I just happened to see that. Um, yeah, because you can actually see and get up. You can see the mortar right here. That actually, he actually fires a, uh, a missile, a, a shell out of it. Very cool stuff. Unfortunately, I got lost. That's we couldn't really see cool. it live on stream. But you know, in your own speed runs or your own runs, you know, maybe take a little bit of time, head back to the airman after dropping uh, the um, after dropping the, the bay just to see it. It's it's really cool stuff like that. Um, so we're gonna put away this necklace. And we are basically done in Twisted Strand. Uh, we need to go pick up one more large fish. Oops. Sometimes I switch off a of pace and I try to haste spam and end up either, you know, bringing in and out my trawl net or just zooming in and out with the telescope. All right. Find this little secret here and grab the Goliath tiger fish. Another one of the. Uh, they're called exotic fish. They're one-offs that you can catch one per area. Pick up an emerald ring, which I think is worth 60 or $70, which is, for one slot, is pretty good. 
Uh, when we think about fish, we're really thinking about sort of slot efficiency. Um, so like, you know, how much, how much is it worth per slot? If, something is, if a fish is worth like $120, that's all fine and good unless it has takes up, you know, 14 slots, then it's less than $10 per slot. Uh, that's where trinkets are really good because they can be worth quite a bit of money while taking up very little room in your inventory. So we're heading to this next part here. Uh, there's a few things we have to do in the meantime. Uh, we want to sell the Goliath Tigerfish, put away the trinket. We need to reinstall the uh, Fathomless Reel that we uninstalled. We'll pick up our crab pots, which should be catching some good fish for us. Um, of course, those giant mud crabs are as it says, giant. Um, in fact, we can actually go ahead and sell this anti-tangle line because we will not be catching any more Sell this anti tangle line so we will not be catching any more. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go to a quick break here while we try and fix this. Sorry, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. Uh, sorry about that uh, quick interruption there, but it looks like everything is all good to go again. So uh, whenever you're ready, take it away. Sure. Uh, yeah, so sorry about that. The uh, Eldritch Horrors got inside my internet, I guess. So we're, uh, we've chased them out, uh, and we're ready to go. So uh, we'll restart the run in three, two, one, go. So uh, as I mentioned before the interruption here, we're just uh, storing some items in our dry dock just to free up a little bit extra space in our, um, in our storage. We're going to look for... The main things we want to get is the engine upgrades for obvious reasons as well as the cargo space that's most important to us. We've already sort of uh, planned around not needing uh, extra uh, net spaces. Um, actually, we will need an extra net space here, but not for a while. So uh, we're going to be really looking for the cargo space and the, uh, the engine. So uh, we'll clear up some more inventory space by uh, researching a few things. Next thing we need to research is this larger net. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the run, uh, if you missed it, the uh, there's two two major blocks that we need to make sure that we pick up uh, the aberrations for the trawl-only fish, of which there are two. Um, there's excuse me, the anchovy king, uh, which can be caught anywhere, and then there's the parhelion jellyfish, which can only be caught um, in the stellar basin. So we'll be heading back uh, to both of those. Well. We'll be heading back to Stellar Basin eventually uh, with a much bigger, much faster um, trawl net. And hopefully we'll get lucky and we won't have to uh, trawl around too long uh, to try to catch that Arhelion. Um, so right now uh, we have another figure in a clothed uh, roped figure that we need to satisfy with some fishy dinner. Uh, he wants a horseshoe crab and a tarpon, which are easy to get. Um, unfortunately, he also wants a barrel eye, which is all the way down in Stellar Basin. Uh, so we're going to have to make a pretty large detour, pretty much straight south, uh, to grab a barrel eye and then head all the way back up to the figure in purple. Uh, all the while, while I'm chased by this... Uh... Okay, well... At least that's over. Um, you know, we're going to take a quick detour here. So one thing... There's two fish that their aberrations are pretty hard to come by. 
Uh, and that's going to be the ocean sunfish and the moonfish. Uh, so they ca they're pretty rare. They're only found in the open ocean. And the other thing about them is that they uh, their fishing spots are very easy to deplete. So there's not very many uh, you can find for each. Uh, let me check my map real quick to see where the barrel eye is. So we want to take an opportunity here to catch at least one uh, sunfish. That will let us uh, get an aberration later uh, much easier, so we don't have to spend one of those uh, relatively rare uh, fishing spots um, catching the fish first and then getting an aberration second. Uh, here's the barrel eye we need. We're all the way down in Stellar Basin. As you can see, uh, we've got to head right back up to this area straight north of us. We're going to hay spam our way back up there. And since we're so poor on money, we are going to take a uh, short trinket selling detour. There is a sextant behind this um, uh, uh, this uh, island, which is the highest selling trinket in the game. I believe it's worth, I think it might be a hundred. Uh, so it's worth it to pick up, especially since we are kind of poor on money for this game. Uh, here is the tarpon he wants, the horseshoe crab he's asking for, and this barrel eye we went through so much trouble to find. He gives us a very good book, Pushing the Limits Engines, which increases the power of our engines by uh, 10%. We want to start reading that as soon as possible. Fish Ocean Sunfish is also worth a fair amount. Not the most in the world, uh, but it's, it's, it's worth it to you to bring with us since we're heading back to the Marrows anyway. Um... We will go ahead and manifest. What you'll notice me doing when I manifest is turning south, and that'll let me automatically, uh, your direction is preserved when you manifest. So that'll let me uh, immediately travel into the dock here. I uh, will store these for now. So this is, gives us the ability Atrophy. Atrophy is the most important ability in this, this speed run, maybe behind haste. What atrophy lets us do is it lets us, uh, number one, instantly clear out a fishing spot, which is already pretty good. But number two, it guarantees that one of them will be an aberration, provided you've caught at least one of them before. So we get a black tip reef shark. Now we're going to atrophy, and we get the cleft mouth shark for sure. Uh, the rest of the speed run, you can use it every 12 hours. The rest of the speed run is basically going to be based around uh, atrophying, Finding some way to spend 12 hours atrophying again. So now that we're at a dock, this is a convenient place to, to sleep. So we're just going to sleep for 12 hours, and then we're going to immediately atrophy again. Uh, our atrophy timer is at 8 o'clock. So that's what we have to keep track of is exactly when we need to atrophy. Um, one thing that I need to turn around and do in a second here uh, it's not too much of a time loss because we do need to atrophy a lot of things here, uh, but we need to make sure we equip the heat-proof rod, which is uh, will be very helpful to us. Oh, and we have a sunfish for us to sell. Um, yeah, the sunfish isn't that important. We'll just go ahead and rest. Now, I want to prioritize uh, atrophying fish that only appear during the day uh, the time of day that I'm at. I'm going to check our logbook real quick to see. Still need to get a, a grouper. So uh, stingrays appear day or night, so I'll kind of have an opportunity at the end here to um, uh, to atrophy them as kind of a, an extra thing. But these groupers only appear at night, so I'm going to make sure that so I prioritize them, um, which will let me, you know, it's just a little bit more efficient uh, just to make sure we're not so we don't have to sleep for 24 hours, just 12 at a time. Back to the fishmonger. Go to the shipwright to get our extra rod. Oh, we also need to repair our engine, so worthy all around. Um, we'll go ahead and sleep until 1 a.m. again, or 1 p.m. Eleven is not the same as one, even though there's two of them. That is accurate. <laughs> Grab these cod. So it kind of depends whether I'm going to actually take the fish with me if I'm heading to a fishmonger. The uh, fish you atrophy will always be stale, which is with, worth 50%, or rotting, which is worth 30%. 
It's not a lot of money, but if I'm heading to a fishmonger anyway, it's a really easy way to just get uh, a quick hundred, two hundred dollars, um, and it's really just it's just an extra butt, couple button presses. So uh, in the long run, it can you can make a pretty substantial chunk of change that way. Uh, the other thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be dredging as much as we can to try to spend the time. Our current dredge timer is uh, about 2 o'clock, so we'll be dredging till 2 a.m. Uh, then we will... What can we dredge around here? There's some stingrays we'll dredge while we're here. Book check? Still reading, okay. So we'll be heading up to the final area of the game, Devil's Spine, um, which, since we're so well kitted out, we won't be spending a lot of time there. Uh, okay. Um, there's not a, uh, there's actually not that many fish unique to Devil's Spine, so you can get them pretty quickly, uh, even j while waiting for at to atrophy. Um, and we have a pretty good route to get through it as fast as we can. Um, we will be returning it to it one more time to complete a final quest, uh, but... That should be around the two-hour mark, so once we finished Devil Spine for the first time, I think that'd be a great time for another break church. Okay, so we got two research parts out of that, which is very good luck. We'll love to see that. Um, our storage is basically empty, so we are going to exploit this a little bit by saving and quitting here and going again. Um, I think what's my dredge timer right? or my... It actually went straight through the day, so we're going to go ahead and grab uh, an, an atrophy of another new mackerel. Our dredge timer is 8 o'clock, which is fine. Um, and we are just going to finish dredging up until right before night time, uh, which we need so we can catch one daytime fish and one nighttime fish here for the next part of the game. Ooh, another research part. I'm a little worried about filling my inventory, my storage all the way up, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call it there. Don't need any explosives, so we'll just go ahead and store these. Uh, we will sleep for a second just to get a little bit less terror. Now we need to head up here and grab a sail fin for the very last uh, roped figure. It will give us. Oh, actually, I don't know, there's one more. So we're on the lookout here. Um, Atrophy's on cooldown until 8. Now we take over until 6 o'clock. I think I rolled something. Yeah, okay, so that's a Manta Ray. Uh, he's fine. He'll just give us a little bit extra terror, but we can live with that. Um, we need to... Let's stop here just for a save point. This man is very... Uh, is very stable and should be trusted. <laughs> With a name like that, how could you not? It's a family name. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. Um, so we'll pick up the last two fish that we need for this, which is going to be a frilled shark. And then, let's see, there should be a cusk eel around here to the northwest. There we go. Now, this guy's a little bit difficult to find in the dead of night, but we will try our best. And for a little sparkle, there we go, there's the sparkle.
Okay. So we're going to head back to the ancient temple, and we're going to atrophy this Cusk Eel on the way. Okay. So that's not going to come with us. So now uh, we're going to sleep. It's midnight, so okay, daytime. Um, I'm going to head back over here. Go to our storage. We'll take out all of our crab pots. Uh, we can repair that later. Um, we'll throw away the rot. Now we need to sleep until daytime. So we're going to catch a few things. Uh, what the fanatic asked us to do, actually, is we need to collect three pieces of fire uh, from some shrines around the area. Uh, one of them is going to require us to catch a pale skate. Uh, but the interesting thing about the pale skate is we also need an aberration of one. Oh, okay, got it first try. So we need it to be infected. So infected fish lasts the longest out of anything that you can get out of an atrophy. So since we got the atrophy infected fish first try, we're actually in a really good position here. Uh, we're gonna collect that note just so we don't forget it later. We can drop these above 10 meters. And that should be fine. We're just gonna check. Here's 25, yeah, okay, good. We just wanna make sure that we had a, them at the right depth, which we do. We're going to sleep till morning again. Perfect. We got all the uh, the crabs we need. Um, we can't fit anything else in here, so we're just going to leave those alone. Um, can I pick this one up? Yeah, I guess. We're going to repair these efficient crab pots. Uh, this is one of the best places to get money in the game, is just crab potting uh, outside of Devil's Spine. So we're going to take full advantage of that. Um, we want to go to Shipyard, repair this. We're going to drop those there to make sure we get the Volcanic Snail, which we need to 100% uh, this area. Now we got the Armored Sea Robin. So, uh, the thing about infection is it can spread through the fish inside your cargo hold. And that's fine with us, because that, like I said, will make them last a little bit longer. So, we'll I'll go ahead and unlock this, uh, which gives us some trinkets to sell and some parts. Uh, we'll head to the next area. Um, actually, we do need to head back, so we need to make sure we grab three explosives uh, for this next part. Explosives. So we're gonna save. So whenever you save and quit, the shop re resets. So we can just go ahead and save and quit to make sure we get that last explosive. Perfect. And we are off again. So we will collect. This is the very last exotic fish, uh, which needs an explosive to access. This is the cola camp. Um, odds are pretty good that it will rot before we can um, actually do anything with it. For example, sell it. This is gonna fit. But we will keep, keep it on hand. It's, it'll probably become infected before we can do anything with it. Uh, but we'll keep it on hand just in case. We need to grab this ancient tablet here. This is uh, another quest that we'll be completing back at the Marrows. So, uh, let's see, I need to get, get a skate. I need to get a regular skate. Once again, a victim of trying to remember two things at once here. Luckily, it's not too far off. This guy is going to be a problem, so we are going to go ahead and banish him. All right, perfect. Pale skates are only available during the day, so it's a good thing that we um, grabbed him when we did. Ooh, there we go.
Now, it is possible to sneak out through this little area right there. Um, I'm not good at it. So we, we got the extra explosive for the safety strat, which is just going to put us out through here. Um, it's fine. Uh, we've already gotten that aberration, haven't we? Oh, great. So this is a random aberration spawn. We need another aberration for the next part here. I'm just going to go and throw that away. It's not worth it anymore. Um, how do we fit this? There we go. A couple more things we need to do here. So the first thing we need to do is I will pick up this message. We head up this way. There will be a stone tablet. The very last one, or actually the, the second one, we'll need to pick up three in total, uh, which is behind a wall that you must bomb. So there should be a frilled shark somewhere, and we'll grab that as our atrophies. We haven't atrophied in a while. We'll uh, head on in here to finish this quest. Okay, so we're just going ahead and sleep to reset our banishment cooldown because there's a couple things that we need to do here. Um, first thing is we need to go pick up this. Actually, we'll do that later. The first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead and grab the last ancient tablet that we need. Let's see if we can get through this without having to banish. They'll make a special noise when they're... Uh, their deal is that they slow you down and then also summon uh, their mother, which can actually damage your ship. So we actually got out of there without needing to uh, banish them, which is very good, because now we can use banish to pick up this last piece of refined metal, uh, which is the very last one we'll need to pick up in order to uh, complete our, uh, our ship upgrades. Finished reading a book, so we'll finish reading... Um, eh, advanced fishing sounds good. Now, hmm, I think we want to head back over to the pontoon. We'll empty out the crab pots. Um, we'll finish atrophying this area. Very good. Let's see how much money we can make here. More? No. Okay. So, uh, these spider crabs, they're kind of hard to put in your inventory, but they're actually very slot efficient and worth quite a bit of money. Uh, so this is a very good spot for us to just kind of hang out for a little bit uh, in order to try to make some, uh, some good cash. But, in the meantime, we do have some quests that we need to complete. Um, so let's head back over this way to t finally talk to the fanatic. We will uh, get the very last relic, head back to uh, the Marrows, and uh, then we start what I like to call the rest of the game. Because uh, that's just going to be finishing up some very last minute side quests here. Um, and some last things that we need to, to finish up to 100% the game fully. 
we'll do that pretty shortly here. Pick up the relic. Um, there's one last thing that I remember that we have to do before we leave. That is going to be uh, talking to the old mayor. Uh, so as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, one of the things you have to do is uh, you, you're, you're going to need to talk to every NPC, which is a very fancy way of saying uh, you need to unlock every ending. So we're going to do that right now. Um, on our way, ooh, that's a nice aberration spawn that we will take. I believe this is a serpent mackerel. Let's see if I can post port depletes. No, it looks like it's just going to deplete on me. So you can see that there's a little campfire up here. So we will just go ahead and pull this. Talk to him. We've met him now. Uh, we'll need to come back to this campsite later. The reason we have to do this now is we, we're going to come back to this campsite later. We need him to be gone by then. So we'll just uh, make sure he's gone. And now we will go ahead and do the very last part here. So we'll sleep till daytime, and we need to find uh, one of the sunfish that are around here. There's three of them that are spawned pretty close by to each other. Um, let's see, there should be one just off the side here. There we go. So we'll actually this for the first one, and we will manifest back to... Uh, Blackstone Isle, which will, and that will be technically the end of the main quest, but we won't finish the game just yet. Um, so that's kind of, I think, a good stopping place, Church, if, if it's about time for a uh, for a break. Yeah, we're at about that time. So during right. these longer runs, everybody, we like to take a break about every hour or so, just so everybody can get up, stretch, get some water, anything they might need to do, so we don't uh, miss any of the gameplay while it's going on. Just a quick reminder before we go to the break, if you missed out on any of our other Hotfix shows or our past events like Flame Fatales, you can go check out the VODs over at youtube.com slash gamesdonequick. They take about four days to upload for our regular shows, and then for events, it's the next day. Uh, with that said, we will be back in just a few minutes with the rest of the run. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. We are in the middle of a Dredge 100% speed run, and we are nearing the end of the run. I'll hand it right back over. Whenever you're ready, you can uh, give a quick countdown. Yeah, sure thing. So we're gonna undock here, and that's uh, we'll start. So we'll start going in uh, three, two, one, go. So we're pretty close to what I call the rest of the run, uh, where ooh, get away from me, you birds. Uh, there really isn't much, you know. There's there's some routing, there's some strategy, but it really is just playing the rest of the game real good. Uh, we're going to be getting the rest of the notes we need. We'll be getting all the aberrations we need. Um, this is really the last quest that we'll be completing, and after this, it's just going to be a lot of uh, sleeping and a lot of uh, let's see, you can sell that. A lot of sleeping, a lot of atrophying, uh, just general crimes against nature. Um, in fact, we are going to sleep here just since we have an opportunity to. Um, actually, we're going to sleep back here. So uh, where we're at in the run right now is we are a little low on both materials and on money uh, from where I would perhaps want to be. Uh, these are both pretty easily fixed. So we'll just make sure that we are extra prioritizing uh, both of those things going forward here. Um, let's go ahead and look at the dry dock and how are we doing on materials? We can, oh, we have a full inventory. So let's go ahead and store all of these away. So it looks like we can buy some extra cargo space, which is good. Um, we can buy some extra engine space, which is even better. Uh, we actually need an extra board for that, so we can go grab that real quick. Um, one of the things you'll see me uh, checking my logbook pretty often just to see which aberrations I have left to grab. We still need another blue mackerel, but it will be nighttime before we can grab an extra one of those. Um, so we're just going to grab this one board, which should reset my atrophy timer. And what nighttime fish can we get? We're actually almost done with nighttime fish. So we'll go over here and grab this stingray, um, which in Actually, that we're going to get this grouper for the money. Uh, groupers are one of the most uh, expensive fish that you can get 
from the Marrows. And, ooh, we're actually getting a lot of really good random aberration spawns right when I said we needed more money, so I will accept this. Um, unless it doesn't want to give them to me. Even when it's guaranteed, uh, it's just still a random chance, so you'll get at least one by the end of the, the fishing spot, but until then, it's kind of like, ah, oh, where can this go? Um, let's get rid of this one. Until I need, might have to, for example, for this one, we had to fish out all of the eels before it would grace us with that last one. Uh, we'll get a, hopefully get a Voltaic grouper here. No, Tusk grouper is fine, but we got a pretty good inventory of expensive fish, as long as we don't run into a rock here on the way out. Atrophy's on cooldown. So we'll go into the dry dock here to buy some extra engine space. And we'll go into the shipwright. We're not going to sell this engine, we're just going to put away, so we'll be using it later. But for now, we'll buy a refined outboard motor, which is going to be just a little bit faster. Not too much more, but a little bit faster, uh, which is what we want right now. Uh, am I reading a book? I am reading a book. Uh, if you're just joining us here, uh, one of the main bottlenecks of the speedrun is going to be uh, how fast I can read books. So we just want to make sure that at, at all times we're reading books, if at all possible. Um, we'll need to make sure we atrophy a uh, bronze whaler shark before uh, we finish this run, but that shouldn't be a problem. We're pretty low on board, so we're going to make sure we pick these up. Um... I think we really need to get all of these parts, which is no problem. Uh, still looking, we're still hoping for those random research part spawns, um, which has an 8% chance whenever you dredge up a material. Uh, we have been pretty unlucky. I think we've gotten four total out of, you know, the 30. I mean, I'm sure all you statistics nerds in chat can lecture me about how, well, actually, it's average to you know over 30 times to uh, only get three uh, research parts. Well, it doesn't feel average. It feels very unlucky. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it feels oh, man, bad. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, you know, the, the speed run, you know, it's, some, some people in the speed running Discord were complaining about... Um, you know, in the 80% run, you only dredge up, I think, uh, I don't run at 80%, I believe it's four, possibly, materials, and you need to roll that, you need to get at least one research part to be competitive. Uh, there's backup strats, but the, the run's been optimized so much that you really need to, uh, we're not going to go back for this, we're going to drop this one off. Uh, so, you, you you know, it's, if you want to be competitive, you have to make sure you get that research part. People complain like, oh, you know, it's been 20 runs since I've gotten this research part. It's supposed to be an 8% over four times. Now, of course, that, that one guy shows up and is like, well, actually, that's still average. And it's like, well, but I don't want to be average, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it might be average, but I don't like what average is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we're going to head, so we got the stone tablet, and the, there was a little riddle on the stone tablet which talked about a guiding light. Uh, well, there are two lighthouses in uh, in the map of Dredge. One of them is at Greater Marrow, and that's not where we need to go. And we're actually going to head for this lighthouse up here on the hill. Um, there's some nice lore in there uh, talking about uh, what happened. You know, this isn't just sort of a, a random occurrence that things are as bad as they are. We're going to pick up this... Grilled Shark Aberration. That's worth quite a bit of money. Ooh, and a trophy. Uh, that's going to be very good if we don't lose it. Um, so there's a little bit of lore talking about how, um, why things are the way they are. Uh, I'll leave that up as an exercise to the, the player because, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of uh, spoilers, but I would highly recommend this game for anyone uh, who thinks it looks remotely interesting. Uh, this is one of my favorite games that I've played so far this year. Um, I think it's just a masterpiece. And I would, you know, can't sing its praises enough, so highly recommend anyone who thinks it looks interesting uh, to go ahead and, uh, and play it. Uh, interesting thing we just got is we've gotten through this whole run without buying a single light. Uh, it's just a waste of time to buy a light otherwise. Uh, so, you know, we're two and a half hours in and we finally have a light uh, which will help us see those <laughs> rocks and not run into them. Uh, a few things. So somebody said in any percent it's five 
times for uh okay. Oh sure, fair enough. Uh, and and then a little earlier on, somebody asked, and I had the question until literally this second where I was trying to ask it, and now I had to scroll <laughs> up to find it. Uh... <laughs> oh, um, you keep talking about um, endings for the quest line, or getting all of the endings. How many endings are there to the game? There are two endings. Um, so if you look at the any percent uh, categories, there are two uh, types. There's the uh, any percent keeper ending and the any percent collector ending. Uh, the keeper ending you can complete by getting four of the five relics. Uh, and the collector ending, you have to complete five of the five relics. So uh, in general, the keeper ending is a little bit faster. Uh, but for our purposes, um, in, in 100%, it's actually just a couple of minutes faster um, to do the, uh, the collector ending. Um, I wouldn't say that either is really the true ending. Um, it's really just sort of, you know, the, the good ending or bad ending, as it were. Uh, we can fit one more if I do this. Okay. So we are at the point where we're going to start looking for those rare dredge only, uh, or excuse me, trawl only uh, fish. We're going to head over here. Uh, this guy gone stale? Yeah, a little bit. That's all right. Um, we need to free up some space. Let's head into the floating dock here. Um, let's atrophy off cooldown. It is. So we're going to pick up the sea robin. And now we are finished with uh, Devil's Spine, I believe. Let's maybe just double check. If you don't get to the very end and realize what we've forgotten something, we need a serpent mackerel. Ooh, and we need the volcanic snail, which might be a bit of a pickle. Let's see here. Yeah, oh, so we need to oh. actually stay here a little bit longer to get the volcanic snail. Somebody just asked, um, so first time seeing the game, what kind of horror stuff does it have? I would say it's mostly, an, like, it's it's a weird combination of atmospheric horror and still being an incredibly chill and fun game. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it's it's still a fishing game at its core, right? Like, you can't get that extreme of a fishing game. It's, yeah, it's, it's much more suggestive. You know where you sort of have to read between the lines to see where the you know the true horror is. Um, you know it's not like there's ju there's not like jump scares um, if you don't count like ghost sharks uh, suddenly attacking you, uh, which you know maybe that is a jump scare. But yeah, it's 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 a pretty chill game. Um, I myself am not a huge fan of horror, a fan of horror games or horror movies, uh, and this is still right up my alley. So I w I wouldn't say it's like an extreme horror game, but it's it's you know atmospheric. I think might be the best way to put it. Yeah, it's got a very, like, dark undertone to the story and everything, but, yeah. like, you're fishing. You got a boat. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. We're here to fish. Um, let's see if we can do some... Quick reorganization. Oh, I can't fit the very last thing in here. Um, bummer. Sometimes you just look at your inventory and you're like, I'm sure I, if I sat here for five minutes, I could find a way to fit everything. <laughs> but at a certain point, it's just faster just to give up and just try again. Come back. Just yeah. come back for it. Okay, so we're going to drop this off here. So we need to get a volcanic snail, which is at uh, 10 meters or less. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and just sleep for a straight 24 hours um, and see if we can roll a volcanic snail. Once we get that, we'll be done with Devil's Spine and we'll be leaving for good. Unless I forget something and have to come back. Nope. And... We're still here! One more time! Uh, 
Um, we can go ahead and sell this rod, actually, since we're done with it. We'll move this over here. And let's go ahead and... We need two more boards. We'll get those later. So we're going to go ahead and research the biggest net. And what that does for us is that'll let us catch anchovies uh, anywhere we're moving. So we're always going to have a trawl net out. That's just basically free money that we get um, along the way. So that'll be a, a pretty useful uh, item for us. As we're sort of fishing for our uh, kind of the last little pieces of completionism here. Um, we'll take those guys. I am positively begging you, game, to please just give me a volcanic snail. Oh my goodness. Well, we're just going to say this was planned and that we needed to get extra money. Yeah, all, all according to plan. All according to plan, absolutely, 100%. Okay, this can go here. I'm just going to throw this out so we can repair these. Okay, Volcanic Snail. See? All according to plan. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and repair these. Um, it is the perfect time of day, but... Right, we're going to do a couple things here. So we need to actually get um, a sunfish on our way out. But there's actually one more um, fish that you need to catch in Devil's Spine. And that's going to be the Serpent Mackerel. So we'll atrophy this. Well, they're worth a fair amount of money, so we'll, we'll take it just in case it's worth something on the way back. Um, oops, going too far west so we're just going to do some quick sleeps here um let's see okay so that guy has respawned we're just picking up these cloth because we're here and we need more cloth so we might as well Um, book check? We are not reading a book. That's unfortunate. Oh, no. That's why we check. So, let's hope that doesn't ruin us here. Uh, we might be okay. We might have to uh, do some uh, some fancy stuff at the end to try to kill time, but um, it's pretty... Oh, my goodness. It's pretty par for the course. Uh, that you'll eventually forget to read books. I don't think I've had a, a complete run where I haven't had some amount of time uh, where you I forgot to read the books. Okay, so we're gonna. So actually, if you look at that serpent mackerel, um, it has a guaranteed aberration spawn. We are going to. Ooh, I might have messed that up. Actually, well, we'll see. Oh, my single spindle is broken. Okay, here's what we need to do. Um, okay. We're going to have to sleep for a full another day um, just because we uh, broke our fishing rods. So we can't uh, fish up that, um, that serpent mackerel aberration the way we want. But not the biggest deal in the world. And uh, make do. Uh, so that guy's infected, which is kind of good for us. Now we need to sleep until 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll pick up the very last sunfish um, aberration. And then we'll head on to Gale Cliffs to get all the aberrations there. Uh, like I said, this is sort of the, the rest of the game. So it's going to be a lot of just sort of uh, just chores, mostly. Blackfin tuna, getting that is good. Because uh, that means we can atrophy it later. We'll atrophy the sunfish. That's a normal looking fish. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, let's see. So, sing oh shoot. Okay, so we need to go repair our fishing rod. Lickety split. Ooh, we got the tiger mackerel uh, from the trawl net. That's actually super good for us. 
Uh, because if you'll remember, because I'll rot it out. That's fine. If you'll recall, um, the uh, the figure in blue over here needed a tiger mackerel, so that's going to save us a little bit of time um, having to go out and get one. So let's go ahead and grab the book from him right now. Uh, the book that he gives is, I think it's called Haggling and Barting, uh, Bartering, and what it gives is um, it gives you a five percent bonus to everything that you sell, uh, which is, you know, since we're so poor on money right now, is uh, exactly what we need. All right, and this is for sure the final rope figure. So I believe, ah, one more quest. One more quest. Uh, yep, yeah, it looks like uh, we've, uh, we're have we going to take a quick break here, see if we can resolve this. Sorry about that again, everybody. Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. There's a little bit of an internet problem, but we are all back and ready to go with uh, more Dredge uh, 100% uh, whenever you're ready. All right, we'll uh, get back at it in three, two, one, go. Uh, so we, what we did, uh, baby, while I was off stream here is uh, we turned in the quest for the uh, exotic fish, which gets us a solid eight research parts. Um, so let's maybe just take a look here at, at how many we have left to do. Um, I like to kind of complete uh, the nets first, just because we can get those done. And we can hopefully complete the pots. Ah, one shine in the pots. Okay. So one thing that you can do is you can actually buy research parts for $315 each. So we are going to be trying to do that as often as we can. Um, we can just, you know, save and quit and reset. And that does, you know, let us do that. But that's a little bit slow. Uh, and so it's probably a little bit better just whenever we have an opportunity just to head to the shipyard and uh, buy those whenever possible. So we need some more boards here. So we're going to take a, a short detour here. Uh, we'll make sure to get our crab pots out since it's just free money for us. And also put away some of the trinkets that we picked up. Uh, we do need to repair. And let's check our attribute. Attribute is on cooldown. So what we're going to actually do now is we're going to drop these at under 5 meters. And now we're going to go ahead and head over to the back side of um, Gale Cliffs over here where there's a shipwreck, which is very convenient for us. And it's actually nearby some uh, fish spawns that we'll need to atrophy eventually. This is kind of how we're going to kill time uh, in between atrophies until we have all of the materials that we need. One thing we need to keep in mind is that we have not yet uh, acquired the either the anchovy king or the parhelion jellyfish, uh, which are hopefully not going to be the, um, the real roadblocks on this run, but we'll just have to see. Um, we'll need to catch both of them. You can only catch them by trawling. You can only trawl while you're moving. Uh, which is a little bit unfortunate at this part of the run, because we're going to be spending a lot of our time either sleeping or dredging. So we'll just have to hope that uh, RNG looks favorably on us. Now at this point, I believe... Oh, good. We'll take that research part. Which is basically just $315 in our pocket that we don't have to spend later. Um, so we're going to take a quick... I believe that we... Okay, Black Sea Bass, that's good. I believe that we do have all of the um, cloth that we need. So we might go back and just confirm that. We're just going to zoom on back here. Okay, hey, we got an anchovy at least, but ooh, was that a... Oh, I thought I saw... Oh, there's a guaranteed aberration there. Is it one we have before? No, it's not. Okay, we finished reading a book, so we will not forget to hit it again this time. Uh, three books left. Oh, we need to read Haggling and Bartering. 
those crap pots will be good for another day, so we don't have to pick them up just yet. Let's go ahead and upgrade. Oh, we do, certainly don't have enough money for this. I don't think we have enough storage for much more either. So we are just going to try to try to blast through this and sleep. Um, oh, what time was it? What was our attribute time? Well, we'll just um, call it four o'clock. Oh, I haven't caught a wreck fish yet. That's too bad. Um, so that's that's one of those things I was talking about where you need to make sure you catch every fish at least once um, before you atrophy it in order to actually be able to get a aberration out of it. So since we hadn't caught a wreck fish yet, uh, we were not able to get its aberration, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, it's not the end of the world. We can certainly make do. And in fact, we will go and grab another wreck fish here. Just back around the corner here. Okay. Yeah, so that's where he normally spawns. Uh, if you watched the earlier part of the run uh, where we were able to manipulate his spawn, I thought we'd be able to get away without doing that, but I was woefully incorrect, and so we paid the price for it. That's all good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rest until nighttime. Get the black... Oop. Looking at my map instead of the screen and overslept. We've all been there. Should be a black bass pretty much straight north of us, but it's going to be uncooperative. Okay. Sometimes a little hard to navigate at night. Um, I don't really want to spend too much time looking for it. I since I've kind of lost my bearing, so we're going to go over here and grab a stonefish instead. Uh, which spawns day and night, so reasonable compromise. Atrophy. Um. These guys won't be worth anything by the time we're actually get around to selling them, so we'll just go ahead and sleep until morning. This will be about time to collect the crab pots. We'll go ahead and sleep for a little bit to set some timers. This should be an ocean. Oh, cooldown still up. I think it's about midnight that our atrophy timer's on. Okay, that's not what I want. This is what I want. Let's go ahead and collect from our crab pots, which have one hour remaining. In our very full inventory. Not worth the most in the world, but beggars can't be choosers at this point. Ooh, a lot of decorator crabs. Um, we're just going to toss... Actually, we can leave this one out. In fact, I think we are going to move these out past five meters. I don't usually collect, uh, try to collect money here. I think it's actually going to be more time efficient to uh, catch only rock crabs, which are a little bit easier to stack in your inventory. There's going to be fewer trips and ultimately more fish that we can sell at a single time. Um, decorator crabs you can catch from five meters and below, and anything above five meters is going to be only rock crabs. All right, who are we catching now? We still need to look for another tiger mackerel. We have the salmon we need. We need a perch. There's the tiger mackerel. Let's just make sure we aren't wasting our time here. Yeah, we need one more. Ah, these aren't going to survive, so we'll just throw these out. So, um, I believe 8 a.m. is or 8 p.m. is going to be our next atrophy. We can get this stonefish that are should be right here again.
and 9.30 will be our next one. We're going to save and quit here to try to reset the atrophy time, or to reset the spawns on the wreck fish that are here. We should have passed enough days that they will respawn for us. Mm, no dice on that one. Okay, we're going to have to go on the back side of the island for that. That's totally cool. We can do that. Mm, you're a wreckfish, okay. Gale Cliffs, Black Sea Bass, Conger Eel, Sturgeon. Okay. Almost enough money to get the next hull upgrade, which means we can start dredging again. There should be a Conger Eel. Actually, need to spend a little bit of time here. We're just uh, dread. We do need some. We're gonna need some more boards before the end of the game for sure, and uh, we need to spend a little bit of time before we can. Our atrophy timer is up. Which, there it goes. Now we can go ahead and grab these conger eels. Um, yeah, we'll try to go sell them. And then we'll collect our crab pots with the. Ooh, who are you? That's black sea bass, which we need. So that's actually going to put us a little bit uh, where we want to be here. Okay. And I believe that leaves us with the ocean perch and the sturgeon, both of which are only daytime fish. We go to the floating dock. Oh, just shy. Is there anything I can sell, perhaps? Uh, not really. So we're going to run and grab the ocean perch, actually, which is over here. That's the salmon. Finish reading that, which will help our uh, money gathering. Yeah, these guys stack particularly well, so I think this will be good for us here. We'll collect our crab pots because we are about to leave Gale Cliffs. Um, and once we collect the sturgeon, we will be out of here. We'll wait until tomorrow morning. Um, and in fact, mm, there is a loose jaw spawn right up there that we could grab. Um, but I don't think it's actually going to be worth it. I think it's much better to um, go out and grab the sturgeon, and then we'll just head and get the uh, loose jaw when we actually go to Stellar Basin. Stellar Basin being the natural place where the loose jaw spawns. So now we're just going to manifest all the way back. And we'll do a quick check of uh, Gale Cliffs to make sure we've gotten everything we have. There's more than a few here in the marrows that we still need to collect. Um, and the other thing is we have quite a bit of trinkets. Um, I think we have all of the mackerels we need. We're going to go up here and sell the trinkets to the uh, trinket seller here, the trader. Mm. Which that's going to net us a very nice chunk of change. Um, let's go ahead and rest. I believe that all of the ones in marrows are going to be daytime fish. Yes. We actually have quite a few to do during the daytime, um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. 
we will go ahead and rest just for a solid 24 hours. Um, and then we'll probably just every time we return to Blackstone, I'll try to get some of these done um, rather than, you know, waiting for 24 hour, a bunch of 24 hour periods. Go ahead and grab the riddle left wounder. Um, actually, what we need to do now is we need to complete one of the shrine quests. I see now that I failed to sell one of my fishing time, which is fine. So we'll head back here. Um, that's as good anyway, because we need to go to the dry dock and actually buy our, our final upgrade. Uh, we are so flush with parts now. Uh, I, we might actually be only need boards uh, from now on, which would be fine with me, because uh, Stellar Basin has quite a few board spawns. Yes, yeah, so that is all the cloth we need. That is, let's see. Four more parts and a bunch more boards. We can do that. Ah, that's right. We need now sleep until nighttime, because uh, we need to make sure we catch all the types of sharks we need. Uh, so that's the next uh, shrine that we're going to do is going to be uh, the shark shrine. Um, we need to get a bronze whaler, a ghost shark, a hammerhead shark, and a black tip free shark. Uh, two of which can only be found here in the Marrows. Uh, we're going to go ahead and store those. Now, since it's nighttime, um, don't need any more squid. We'll go over here and grab the black tipped reef shark. Um, that's going to be more groupers, which we will not have a chance to sell, so there's no point in picking them up. Um, we will go out here and look for some open ocean fish. For example, this viper fish. Uh, actually, that's... We're not going to have a chance to get a moon fish, unfortunately, which is kind of the next big rare fish that we are going to have to uh, pick up eventually. We can get this viper fish at least and atrophy it. Just, get, just to check at least one of them off our list. We'll have to do this one more time. There are two viper fish uh, aberrations. Let's see, looking for a ghost shark now. Loose jaw, arrow eye, there's a ghost shark. We need to make sure we're trawling too. So once again, we're gonna try to do as much at night as we can, because um, we need to try to get the Parhel both Parhelion jellyfish and the anchovy king, neither of which we've gotten yet, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, we can try to manipulate it a little bit here. Uh, where's the shrine? Oh, that's any anyway, I need a hammerhead shark. Nope, uh, none of those aren't hammerhead sharks. There you are. And we'll just go ahead and fit these in here, all nice and snug. That will give us this Viscera Crane Rod. Um, let's see, how can we... I think we can do something kind of interesting here. So, let's see, Aberration still, still in cool zone. One of the things is all of the fancy rods that you get from shrines, for example, the Sinew Spindle, um, the Viscera Crane that we just picked up, um, a, a tendon rod and the fisherman's sigil, I think it's called, um, or salt encrusted talisman. All of those have an invisible uh, chance, in, increase your chances of collecting an aberration uh, just when you're regular fishing. Uh, and I believe that also, I haven't had this confirmed by data miners, but I believe that also applies to fish that you catch while you're trawling. Um, so we're going to try to set up our inventory a little bit. Uh, equipping those special rods and maybe try to increase our chances of getting both the anchovy king and the parhelion jellyfish. Uh, but we'll see how that works out. Um, there's really no way to know without doing some data mining, but it'll at least make me feel better. 
Um, and there's no more ocean fish that we need to catch. So really, we can just get away with only using the tendon, uh, the viscera crane here, which is the rod that we just got. Mm. So we'll head into the fish market. Let's see what we need to do. We need to get out our crab pots because it's just free money. We need to go into our storage. We need to store this. Let's see how we can fit these all in the same place. Uh, we can go to the floating dock and try to store some more of our boards. Uh, we need five more boards, it looks like. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to head out this way. Our atrophy timer is up. We're going to go ahead and atrophy these loose jaws. Um, in the same vein, we're going to drop our crab pots a little bit further out just to make sure that we only catch squat lobsters, which are pretty easy to stack in our inventory. And now, since it is nighttime, we are just going to go ahead and sleep. Um, we're going to sleep until, uh, I guess we can hit the atrophy timer reset. But otherwise, we want to spend as little time during the daytime as possible. Um, we will be able to atrophy these barracudas, which I think I had a guaranteed spawn anyway, so didn't need to atrophy them. But uh, we at least got the savage barracuda for surezies now. How much money are we at? 38. Okay, so now it is nighttime. Pressure is kind of off. We don't really need to haste. We just need to spend a lot of time just moving around and traveling during the night. Um, let's see what we want to do. Well, yeah, I made a little bit of a mistake here. Um, actually, we are just going to save and quit because we haven't gotten the Parhelion anyway. Uh, we need to make sure that we save and quit um, because then we can reset those board spawns. And we still need five boards. So we're going to kind of take... Ooh, do I see one? No, it's my crap pots. We're going to take a little bit of a detour here um, just to make sure that you're kind of traveling around because uh, we're going to have to do it anyway. We'll check to make sure we're still reading a book, and we certainly are. I was just about to ask, uh, how many books do you have left? you got to be nearing the end, right? There are two books left, but they are very long. Uh, so oh, okay. I, th I think we should be finishing the books at about the time when we actually finish the run. Uh, but it's gonna be it's gonna be close which one finishes first, okay. which is sort of ideal, you know. I mean, I the ideal run, you know, you 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 get the end credits just as you finish reading the last book. So that's really the holy grail of uh, run optimization right now that uh, that I'm certainly looking at and trying to plan out. Ooh, we're getting a lot of good research parts here. Uh, we can get that fifth board. All right, so I think my timer is at like five o'clock. So is there anything around? So we're gonna head just straight back in uh, and sleep for another 12 hours here, um, just because we need to Need to be doing some night fishing. Mm. Uh, that should be all the boards we need. We'll go into the floating dock to confirm. More parts. Uh, four parts, okay. Um, okay, we're going to grab the anglerfish, which is conveniently across the way. Um, so even though we're not using the repulsor uh, system, because we're so fast, we can just zoom across this blue hole and the, uh, the squid won't have time to attack us. So now we're going to go ahead and atrophy these guys. 
Um, they might be worth something on our way back. And there's a convenient part spawn and a ship that we can't actually run into. We need four parts. I believe this will give us three. So almost done, but not quite. So we had talked about a little about this earlier, uh, but uh, since we had just talked about the books, people are asking a lot of questions. So sure. uh, there is a hard cap on how fast the run can be because of books, right? Yes, that's right. So uh, you, you, there's, I believe, 12 books. It's 10 or 12 books that, that have to be read as part of the 100%. And they give you bonuses, uh, which are you know useful. But the, the thing about them is you can only read books while you're either traveling or you're fishing. You can't just like sit at the dock and read a book. So what that effectively means is that there's a certain amount of time that you have to spend in the run, either traveling or fishing. And so the way I think about it is that, you know, when I'm kind of going out of my way a little bit to either dredge up boards or, you know, or, or you know, to collect a, an aberration spawn or something like that, I'm not really wasting time because there is a set amount of time that I have to spend both traveling and fishing. So, you know, there's sort of this, this holy grail, like the, the, the ideal route would end exactly when you finish reading the very last book. And it's just sort of finding the optimizations around that rather than, you know, actually finding uh, the, fast, the fastest time. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably two hours and 15 minutes is like the upper limit to how fast the speed run can be. Um, but, you know, the, the, the fastest I've ever gotten, the, the world record right now is two hours and 49 minutes. Um, I'm sh and this run is very, very poor, not very well optimized at all. Uh, probably just because there's not very many runners running it right now. So if you're watching this game and thinking I can do better, then I certainly invite you to do that. And, you know, come come to leaderboards and uh, uh, compete. But yeah, so there's there's a lot of room for improvement. There's a lot of places this run can go, and I'm I'm really kind of excited to see how uh, everything evolves in the next uh, the next few months, few years. Yeah, this definitely seems like one of the things where, like, one of those games where just because there's so much to do, like, there's definitely going to be, like, weird things that it's like, oh, I never thought of this, but this is going to save so much time. Oh, absolutely, and 100%. Yeah. It's, there's just, yeah, there's so much going on, and we really haven't found any major glitches either, uh, which, you know, is, is good and bad. Ooh, we can get this Pearl Grouper here, which is guaranteed aberration, so... You know, there there are certain things like the exploit at the beginning where you can get uh, quite a bit of money right off the bat. Um, I believe I need a Barracuda. So, you know, there, there are some efficiencies to be gained for sure. Um, and it's just a matter of, of playing the game enough, getting enough eyes on the game uh, to, to find those. And even if you don't plan on doing runs, like, you can still you know, theory craft or, you know, be like, hey, I think this would be faster. Stuff like that. Like, all oh, of that absolutely. helps progress speedruns. Oh, 100%. And there are, there are some um, some modders in the in the channel that are... Let's see, I'm tempting fate a little bit here. Um, there are some modders that have been actually putting together some of the maps that I've been using uh, that I have open on every single monitor of my runs. So, yeah, there's, there's always stuff, you know, even if you don't think that you... You can contribute, or you know, there's there's always something that people can do, and just just play around, just uh, you know, play the game, find things out, uh, and and test things. You know, you, sometimes you never know something's going to be faster until you get get in the the trenches and try it. So, oh, our luck is pretty abysmal right now for aberrations, um, which that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, but it's still still a little unfortunate when it happens. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm running out of uh, fish I need to catch. Hammerhead Shark's the last one, and Barrel Eyes. Okay.
Oh man, I'm paranoid. I, I just had to check to make sure I had this had the correct net equipped because. Oh boy, this is a bit of a, a dry spell. But you know what? We're just going to call this that we, we need to get the money eventually, and why not do it here? Yeah, you still need a decent amount of money for all the upgrades, right? I do, for sure. So, you know, these squat lobsters are worth a fair amount of money. They stack really well. Um, so we can definitely um, use the time effectively. But, you know, I wouldn't complain if in the next 30 seconds we got uh, both the anchovy king and the <laughs> helium jellyfish. All right, should be able to pick these up now. Oh, I've got to repair them. Yeah, we've we've looked for a way to try to uh, like so. There's a certain spot um, where you can actually guarantee that you'll be able to collect an anchovy king, which we might have to hit up later if our luck continues to be pretty sour. Uh, but we haven't found one of those for the Parhelion jellyfish yet. Um, it's just the the way it's it's coded. They are available from. 0 to 99 meters. So you can always catch either a firefly squid or an aurora jellyfish. So there's really no way to to uh, manipulate it in a way to guarantee that you can only get a parhelion like you can with uh, the anchovy. Oh, I slept all the way through the day again while I was talking. All right, we're desperate times call for desperate measures. We're just going to just do some loops around this area here just to force our troll nut to catch something. Um, by staying in this relatively um, low depth area, we can eliminate some of the extra spawns and guarantee that we only get the um, either the anchovy, a firefly squid, or parhelion jellyfish. There we go, parhelion jellyfish. So that's good. So we can now move on from this area. Um, I believe we still need to get a barrel eye. Yes, barrel eye and they're both red snappers. Okay, that's fine. I've blown up one of my engines, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Just got to find a barrel eye spawn. Look at the map here. Too far south, so I need to head. Oh, there should actually be one behind me. Barrel eye, there we go. So we've got half of the uh, the, the real uh, kick in the pants RNG spots. Um, we'll have to do a little bit more here uh, just to get the red snapper, and then we will move on with our lives. I want to make sure we buy these research parts. So when, when you buy research parts, every day there will always be at least one. Uh, there's a 30% that there will be two. So that's always we'll always like to see that. Because um, that'll just make things a little bit faster in terms of actually catching, or sorry, in terms of buying them. Just fewer clicks, fewer resets we have to do. Um, so it's just a, a small efficiency, but an important one. We will pick up our crab pot since we are heading out soon. And we will make sure to find, this should be Aracuda. Where's a red snapper? There's a red snapper. We're on one last book. Um, <laughs> Atrophy is still on cooldown, unfortunately, so we're just going to head back 
to the dock to sell the fish that we have. Once again, thankful that you can't uh, actually collide with any docks. Doesn't do any damage to you. That Let's would be like some it's... of these. God. Oh, I was I was just talking to myself here. Yeah, it, it would be pretty bad if if you yeah. could collide with the docks. Yeah, like it's such a nice quality of life feature just to stop players from like, oh, I'm gonna go back to you know heal or whatever, and then you just like crash and it's over. Oh yeah. 100%. And I can, yeah, I can show you actually a little bit of, um, a little bit of speed tech. So there is actually an optimal way to enter the dock. Uh, let me just pick up my, well, I blown up all my engines, so I can't do it too fast, but there's an optimal way to, to enter the dock. So if we crawl our way back here, if you actually get perfectly up to it and you hold down F, you can see that was a very smooth transition. Whereas otherwise, if you're kind of off kilter, it actually takes a very long time to get into the dock. So there, there is, you know, there are some small optimizations like that to make sure that you're uh, doing things correctly, as it were. Doesn't save a lot of time, but you know, a few seconds here and there can add up over time. He's still on cooldown. We're gonna go grab the last viper fish while we're over here. I think we saw one nearby. Maybe not. I'm looking at my map and I don't see one. So maybe we'll just grab the last uh, red snapper and be on our way. Paranoids, we'll just make sure Stellar Basin is correct. Okay. So we're going to do... You can tell I'm getting impatient at the end of the run because I keep blowing my engines up. It's, it's, that's always the way it goes, right? You have your high patience for two and a half hours, and at the very, very end, you're just like, come on, just be done. I'm like, so close. The the end is in sight, and I can, if I just go a little faster, it'll be done. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I just, I just need to click a little bit faster, get a little bit more out of the engines, then you end up being actually slower in the long run. Oh, how, how it all goes. All right, so we're back here. So one thing that we probably need to remember is that um, our we only have daytime marrows fish that we need to catch uh, for uh, for atrophies, um, but there is an extra fish that we can go grab south of here, which is the moon fish, which is relatively rare. We go straight set eh, a little bit southwest, maybe. I promise that's the last time I blow up my engine. Ooh, actually, we have don't have the right engine for that, so we're gonna head back. Uh, we we unequipped our um, oceanic line so we could get a little bit better uh, RNG, but it doesn't work in the long run. So let's just go into our storage. We can unequip this, reequip this. There we go. And while we're here, um, we do need to grab a bronze whaler. We're going to keep our trawl net because you can catch an anchovy at any depth. So uh, as long as we have it out, we have a very small, we have a small but significant chance. Um, to hopefully pick it up. So our ship is now fully upgraded, um, which also means... Actually, no, we have all of that. Uh, let's make sure to repair it. So that is one last thing that we have done. Um, let's maybe check. We have 12 out of 12 messages. Our encyclopedia, we only have 18 more fish to catch. So we are closing in on the home stretch here. I believe we need Gulf Flounders still. Yes. We'll attribute this Gulf Flounder. Just kind of doing my last second checks here to see what all we have left to do. We're going to do another 24-hour uh, sleep here because we need to get a Sailfin uh, Aberration. The very last Sailfin Aberration we will get... Um, on our way to the end of the game, you can still catch fish at the you know when you're when you're heading to the end credits. So we'll um, we'll get that at that point, um, and that'll be the very last thing we do. 
Uh, we do need to find a sail fin around here. Where are you? Oh. Did I pass it? Oh, it's right in front of me. No, that's, that's a tuna. Okay, there it is. It was right behind me. Um, so that's in one of the... Uh, they, they added some extra aberrations as part of the patch 1.2, which makes this run uh, a, a little bit longer. Uh, it would be not as long as this. Uh, this is more to do with bad RNG. Um, but uh, it adds about five minutes to the run. So the leaderboard's been split in sort of pre-1.1 and post-1.2 uh, to account for those those few extra tasks that you have to do to complete the, uh, to complete the game. Um, I believe I am missing... Yeah, I have not caught a surgeon fish yet. So we're going to do something a little bit sketchy here. So we're going to take this off. Um, we're going to sleep until night. Now, I don't like doing this at night. But actually, I think we might sleep till morning. Because we're going to go get the last fish shrine. And by doing that, we'll actually get a... Um, a rod that's capable of catching mangrove fish again, because we sold our rod that was able to do it before. So, it's just sort of a, a, a weird little coincidence. It's, it's normally at this point of the run, you don't have to do anything, but we're just sort of in a, a weird little spot where we, ha we have one more fish that we need to make sure that we catch. Um, I believe I still need brand please. Yep, I still need that, but... Only a little bit of time to reset my atrophy timer. Book is almost done. So we'll grab this aberration spawn, we'll head to this shrine, and it'll give us a fancy new rod. Okay, now we're going to head back and is that a sergeant fish? It's a gar. The tarpon. That's going to be eels. Already got. Yeah. So we're just going to head back out here. Uh, we should have dropped some crab pots since uh, giant mud crabs are pretty good for getting money. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Yeah. We'll go ahead and sleep until daytime. Um, actually, we can do some night fishing, can't we? Yeah, our atrophy's up. Let's go find a catfish, since it's nighttime. We'll head back to sleep. Yeah, so the last part of the game is just a lot of uh, a lot of sleeping, a lot of napping. You know, we 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 were fishing hard for a few hours. It's it's good to just take a little break sometimes. Don't want to overwork ourselves. Um, while we're here, let's make sure we're buying our research parts. Since that's the next, really the last big barrier that we have to overcome here. Um, there should be a sergeant fish somewhere in here. Gar, there we are. Okay, so we've read the last book, so uh, really the only thing standing our way is that completing the rest of the game here. Um, so we're going to do a couple things here uh, while we're at this area. Need to re-equip this rod. Uh, which puts us at morning, which is fine. We can live with that. I believe we're good on nighttime fish and twisted strand besides the gray mullet. We'll just grab a gray mullet real quick. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to... So right now our, our atrophy timer is at like 5 o'clock, which is kind of a sketchy place to be in because it doesn't really give you enough time to get anywhere. We're just going to go ahead and reset it back to 6 o'clock at night. Uh, and we're going to go catch some moonfish, which are kind of the other main um, rare fish that you'll have to find uh, at the end of the game here. Um, usually they only have one fish there. We have read some books, which might help us like that. So normally that would have run out right away, but because we've read some books, it gives us a 15% chance to uh, not deplete a fishing spot when we catch something, we were able to atrophy right away, uh, which is going to save a little bit of time. Not a lot, but a little bit. Sleep till daytime again. We'll collect our crab pots on our way out of here. Oh. So this will save us some time by getting the gray mullet. I got the entwined mullet. We'll get the gar. These are all rotting. I really shouldn't have picked these up. That's all right. Because I would rather pick just to spend the time uh, emptying my crab pots. We can go ahead and sell our light. It's served us well so far, but uh, we no, have no longer have need of it. Uh, six research parts. How are we doing? Pots is done. Nets is done. Engines. Six more. Sleep till nighttime. Get the very last moonfish. Perfect. All right. Oof. Didn't think I ran into that guy, but I guess his hitbox uh, gets bigger when he wakes up. We are actually going to redeploy these. Oh my goodness. A little bit deeper, because I want to be catching giant mud crabs. which can only be caught at greater than five meters. All right, let's not blow up the last engine while we limp back into port. Mm. All right, I believe we only have the gar left and twist strand and then we're finished. So we're not quite done with aberrations once I get this gar. Uh, you're not a gar. Where are you? You're not. I don't know why I thought you were. Um, so there are some fish in the open ocean that we still need to get. So the viper fish, uh, we've gotten the rat tail. I believe we need to get a blackfin tuna aberration. Um, where am I looking? Over here, there should be a gar. Hello. Um, that may be it. Besides the anchovy, obviously, but the anchovy we have a plan for at least. Head around the corner here. So we will now um, sleep until night time. Let's see which fish we have left to collect. Blackfin tuna, viperfish. Might be it. And she'll be king. We're just going to do a quick page through to make sure we're done. Otherwise. Ah, sailfin. We were doing it at the very end. That's right. Okay. Um, so we're going to find a viperfish. We think we find a viperfish just straight south from here. Actually, is not off course. Yeah, we're going to collect 
our um, crab pot since we're out here. Sorry, everybody. We're just, uh, you know, quick, quick uh, on-air difficulties we are trying to resolve. Shouldn't take more than a moment, hopefully. We're uh, we're we're gonna take a few seconds here, everybody. We're just gonna take a quick break so we can resolve this. Sorry about that, everyone. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. Uh, sorry about that again. You know, the Eldritch Horrors are trying to prevent the run from being completed, but we're almost at the end. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Give us a countdown. <laughs> Yeah, they have no idea. We're on their side. We like we like the Elder Tours. Uh, we'll get started again in three, two, one. Let's dance. Elder Tours are you know the best. Yeah. Uh, man. Let's remind ourselves where we were headed. No. Viperfish. That's right. I'm just in the middle of an open ocean, just like I, uh, <laughs> I totally remember where I was headed. Yeah. <laughs> There's water to my left and to my right. <laughs> well, you know, I'll take that as a good sign. If I had been beach somewhere, that would have been very unfortunate. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do now is, as I mentioned, we still need to find the Anchovy King. Um, that was actually really good luck uh, to get the random aberration there. So we should just be able to find a Blackfin Tuna. Um, so this is kind of a little tip for all of you guys if you're looking to do your own little 100% run, uh, or just, you know, get the 100% of the game, uh, you'll also probably run into this anchovy barrier, and there's this area over here, uh, just south of, uh, Twisted Strand, where it's not part of any area. So since it's not part of any area, um... Let's see if we can find the right spot. If it's not part of any area, you won't catch any of the, uh... Coastal fish, you know, for example, like the blue mackerels we were finding back at Stellar Basin. You won't find any of the uh, gray mullets here in Twisted Strand. So the only fish that will spawn here, you can tell if you look down uh, at the bottom left of the screen where it says few, you can only ever catch anchovies here. So we're just going to kind of spin in a circle here since uh, there we go, we're catching anchovies. Not the anchovy we want, but it's an anchovy. So we just want to make sure while we're dodging this, uh, this whirlwind, that we're kind of just always moving around so we can just spin in a circle and we will be guaranteed a chance to find uh, an anchovy every time that uh, the, the roll on the, uh, the trawl net table. Uh, so we need to kill some time anyway while we our atrophy timer respawns, uh, which it's done now. That's the gray mullet, which we don't need. 
the, uh, I believe. We actually do have one more that we need to find. So which one would that be? Ah, the Silphin, that's right. So we're just gonna kind of spin in a circle here for a little bit. Um, try to find that Anchovy King. Um, we, can, we can head out and find Blackfin Tuna. And so we're still technically rolling on the table, just we'll have fewer chances to actually find an anchovy. We might find other fish, but uh, while we're waiting for the, the atrophy timer, we'll just spend it over here by the anchovy zone. I've had runs before where I'll find the anchovy king and the uh, parhelion jellyfish right away. And then, you know, sometimes you have runs like this where it's the very end of the game and you're just spinning in circles, twiddling your thumbs. And, and just hoping... <laughs> You just every time you see that little uh, that little fish appear in your net, you're just is this? Nope, oh, nope, not this. Oh, nope. <laughs> this could be it. It could be the time. I believe eleven is my lucky number. Let's go. Eleven fish in the net. This is the anchovy. Ah, uh, the un unfortunate realities of speed running sometimes. Yeah, like, sometimes when there's a lot of RNG, you'll get the really good RNG, and you will get the really bad RNG. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that's kind of a real bummer is this is always at the very end of a run, right? Because, you know, up until this point, there's yeah. always that small chance that you'll, you'll get the anchovy if you just wait. But, you know, when you get to the very end of the run, it's like, I've spent three hours, and now I'm going to spend five minutes spinning in a circle. You can see all the anchovies we caught so far. Um, luckily, every anchovy we catch that's not the anchovy king does give us a small boost to catching a uh, anchovy next. Uh, but someday. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do what we did before um, when we tried to manipulate um, the RNG on the Parhelion jellyfish. We're going to go equip some talismans, which will let will increase our chances of getting an aberration. Um, we hope we could do it without heading back all the way this way, uh, but no such luck. So we'll just try to uh, boost our chances a little bit more and pick up a few research parts, empty our crab pots, that kind of stuff. We'll head into the shipyard. We're just going to go ahead and sell our other uh, rods. We just don't need them anymore. So this encrusted talisman will increase, I think it's a 5% increase? So a pretty good chance, but RNG will do what it wants to do anyway. Mm. And while we're here, let's go ahead and try to buy the last few research parts that we need. All right, so we are done making money because after we catch this anchovy king, uh, we can just go ahead and sell our fishing net for all of the money we need to get the last couple research parts. So the run is effectively over as soon as this uh, this RNG treats us well. Let's see, we want to be at least five meters. There we go. There we go. All right. Nice. So we're going to head back this way. Um, you can only buy research parts. I uh, see. I tell you that it's at a uh, salt and crusted talisman. Should have put that on uh, right away. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and sell all of our research, uh, sell our net, uh, buy the last couple research parts we need. Then we're going to go complete the game and uh, we'll be done. We might do uh, one quick last check here to make sure we completed everything we need to complete. But I don't believe there's anything else for us. So we're going to save and quit a couple times in order to buy the last couple research parts. And I imagine there's a limit to how many research parts can be acquired this way. 
Uh, actually, no. You can buy all the research parts you want. Uh, it's just that uh, one yeah. spawns every time you save and quit, and uh, there's a 30% chance for two to show up. Uh, that's a, a change that the um, the developers made to actually make it easier to 100% the game. Okay. Uh, before, there was only a 30% chance for any research parts to appear in the shop, so it was a pretty miserable grind to get all of them. Yeah, that sounds unfortunate. <laughs> Mm. Okay, well, we've broken our best engine, so we're actually going to have to continue here. So, uh, so one thing I, I did... Yeah, so one thing, I did for, one thing I did forget here was that uh, in order to complete the game, it does have to be 1 a.m., and these uh, guys only appear uh, during the day. So we do have to go pick them up before we finish the game, uh, but now we can for sure... Go back and talk to the um, talk to the collector and uh, perform his nefarious deeds. So I saw you put the collector on the boat. Is it possible to lose the collector? Uh, it is not for story reasons, which I don't want to spoil uh, because it was sure. one of the greatest. Uh, honestly, I didn't see it coming at all. Uh, but no, the, the true identity of the collector is something that you find out in the uh, the second ending. Uh, the keeper at percent ending, and it's was, it's it's it's, uh, it, it's a it's it's small it's a small thing, and it seems obvious in retrospect. Don't worry about that. I didn't run into that at all, uh, but it was it was very cool. So I'm going <laughs> to leave that up as an exercise to all the um, all the people watching that you, you have to go play the game to get to get that one. But no, you can't you can't throw the uh, collector overboard. So time will be when I hit the first the last text box text box here. Time. GG. GG indeed. Despite all the technical difficulties and uh, some bad RNG, I don't think that was a, a bad run at all. No, it was a very good run, and uh, I mean, it shows off, you know, a little bit about like how how RNG can works. But I think you did a very good job of you know explaining the game and showing off what a neat game this is. This is uh this is a game that's been on my radar for a while, and it was like I want. I want to showcase this game. I want somebody to showcase this oh, game yeah. because this is awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, and I hope that you know a lot of pe some people watching will will watch this game and think, "Hey, I gotta play that." And I, this is one of the most fun games I've ever speedrun. So you know, even either play it casually or you know come join the speedrunning community. Uh, I definitely encourage everyone to uh, to get on board. But uh, that's it for me, Church. So I think we're we're about done here. Uh, yeah. Do you do you want to talk a little bit about yourself, uh, where people can find you, anything like that, before we uh, head out? Oh, sure. I'm kind of a small-time streamer. I stream pretty, uh, very occasionally. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash captain underscore carrot. Um, and, you know, I sometimes play Dredge. I sometimes speedrun other games. Uh, sometimes I, I, I make games on an indie developer as well. So uh, give us a follow, and, uh, yeah, you can kind of hang out, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, talk some fishing. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, so it's awesome that uh, you also make your own game. So you kind of you, like does speedrunning uh, give you kind of like any um, feedback or anything like that on making your own games? I think so. so I think the, the number one thing that I, I really take away from that is, you know, speedrunning is sort of its own breed of, of you know, it's a different type of gaming, right? I think the, the number one thing is, you know, uh, a lot of times, if, if if someone finds like a glitch in your game that makes things faster, that's not game breaking. Then I just I just leave it alone, you know. Like let the speedrunners have their little glitches, have their little exploits, um, and don't don't try to don't try to make a perfect game because you know sometimes there's there's fun to be had, uh, you know, breaking a yeah. game and pushing it to its limits. Um. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I mean. I could I could probably pick your brain on things all night. So um, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and I would I'm sure I'd have uh, another several hours yeah. to talk about. But yeah, I'm sure everyone's sick of hearing me talk. So uh, thank you so much for showcasing in this game. Like I said, uh, I've been looking at this game for a while, going just just waiting for a chance. So thank you so much. I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, and if anybody is interested in more, uh, please do go follow Captain Carrot and uh, take a look at some of his games. 
Uh, besides that, uh, that's all we have for you tonight. We will be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. We have some Ratchet and Clank games uh, for, uh, you know, about eight hours, some of the longer categories. Uh, with all that said, we are going to take a quick break while we look for somebody to raid. If you wouldn't mind sticking uh, through the break just so we can cheer on some other people doing some speedruns, that would be awesome. Have a great night, everyone. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for watching.